Three, I remember three, our black please. baby dark chocolate. Dude, good times. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was where I was at, Your dude. bun is in my oven. Yeah, dude. And that baby... Did it? Did it die? Or was it know. taken away like, from us? I, like I remember it not... I grew up and... And, and lived its life. Sophisticated... Became a whore. A sophisticated whore. A sophisticated whore. Yeah. I mean, hey. We knew the mailman was black. But that's about it. Mm -hmm. But I was the woman, so... I wasn't sleeping around. Hello, Hello everyone. Hey, and welcome to episode 97 of the Thought Patrol podcast. This week, we have a returning guest, our boy, Tyler. What you guys say? Tyler! That's me. That's him. I'm back. Yeah, boy. Fuck. You've Continuing my, my long hiatuses of uh, yeah. not being here, so yeah, but we'll he, see. He has arrived for this episode. Just You've always time. been here in spirit. Don't yeah. say such things. I know, Just I in time it. for the discussions we got a lot going on e3 we're in the midst of e3 so the first conference just happened a few hours ago we're going to be recording through one of them which is the bethesda one so if anything crazy happens i will be on twitter uh and if something insane goes around goes down which i doubt it the only thing that'd be cool would be to see doom but bethesda ain't got nothing else to show oh guys doom. guys a bunch Plus of uh, we can also touch on things in the following podcast as well yeah, like a, a, a wrap up, but like, oh guys, uh, Fallout seventy six content. Yeah, <laughs> everyone excited for the Fallout seventy six content. Yeah, more stuff for the Adam Shop. Yeah, Bro, I sense a lot yeah. of hatred toward that game. I love it. I just yeah. uh, think it was handled poorly, very poorly, by the way. But the game itself is is pretty fun. I like the worlds. That's what Bethesda does best is uh, environmental storytelling, and they definitely st did a step up from the other Fallout's in that game. Um, okay, so Anthem and Fallout 76 get into a fight. Who wins? Uh, mm. Anthem shows up to the fight without any limbs, so probably Fallout 76. <laughs> but you just have to wait for a year for those Fallout limbs to be back. Fallout 76 didn't have any features <laughs> on its skin, and the ones that did were in the wrong places. Yeah, so The game started with a nose on its ass, pubic hair is coming out of its singular ear. Yeah, so 76 it's... came with leprosy, and Anthem came without any limbs. So I think it'd be a slap fight with... Mind, but yeah, I think the Battle of the would Cripples, yeah, in. yeah, dude. But, um, I'm excited, dude. From the announcements we've already seen, I'm fucking hyped. I got Tyler caught up on yeah, a few of them from the few videos you showed me. I was just not expecting a few of those, like Halo, but I was like, uh, yeah, dude, I didn't expect Halo either. And then the moment he said UNSC, I'm like, wait. Wait a fucking second. I know UNSC. Wait a second. Is this what I think yeah, it is? We've known Halo was coming. Yeah, no, but the way they show that the reveal was very different. Uh, yeah, I was expecting a whole like a horror game or something like that. Like yeah, right from very the get different. go, very different. It was. I, I think it's. It, it looks was like it a, good. I, I I ignored like ninety percent of. Uh, I only paid attention. Believe to the, me, we know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you? Uh, I I only paid attention to certain parts of Microsoft, uh, specifically the new stuff that they were doing, the new properties. Yeah, a lot of the there's there's a lot of like what people would consider like indie fluff, which I can see because usually you're going for like the big banger things. But I like that they've with all these studios they've picked up, you definitely they'd be seeing a lot of indie titles coming out of them, and some of them look very interesting. Like there's one where you get to fondle a deer, that was pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. The that, furry simulator. Furry simulator. There's a one called 12 uh -huh. Minutes, Tyler, which I didn't show you, which is actually interesting. It looks like it all takes place. I don't know how it works, but it's like a top-down view of a room of a husband and wife chilling. And the husband is stuck in a time loop. So if he fails, he gets reset back to the start of the 12 minutes. Hmm. And so the way I do it is it's, it shows him like in the middle of his time loop. And he's like, there's a dude coming. He's going to kill us. We got to get out of here. You, did, did you accidentally kill your father? Like all this stuff being unveiled. Like what the fuck's going on? And it's because he's been through the loop hundreds of times already. And he's already unveiled all this information um, as, he's been, as, as he's been going through the loop so many times. So... And it looks like it all takes place in that one room. I have no idea, but it's like an interactive thriller narrative experience, and it looks something interesting, something that like would only work in like a a video game. The way they're pushing the style for it and stuff like that. So that looks They've interesting. They've done that kind of story in film numerous times. Oh yeah, the whole I love time loops, time travel, anything along that where you like a lot like ReZero. Not if it's Marvel. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you didn't like that. You didn't like the. Uh, it was a little weak. 
it just it just, if you think of it because some of the stuff just didn't make sense when you go back to like thinking about the film in its entirety so like okay give me an example okay because we have i guess we haven't discussed so we, we won't we won't we won't hold on this for long because we've talked about it but ty- we haven't had to talk to it right about tyler but like okay so explain to me why captain america was at the end how he was there in their in their timeline you're talking about his his old self yeah how was he there in the timeline yes. hmm. if you were to use the rules that the movie put place how was he there in the timeline it sounds like a possible spin-off movie that needs that needs to be made <laughs> for such an exclamation because i'm sure they have one um that is actually a good question that I probably didn't ask because, because I didn't it, care enough. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and that, that that was one of Sean's things is that like not well, that no, many no, people. It would be it would be um well because of the machine that they had. Um, he went back in time, right, to and deliver the stones. Mm-hmm. And once he had him put into each place at each sequential order that he had to or whatever, uh-huh. and then he went back to um um to live out his life with uh-huh. his beloved. And that's why he was old. Right. But so when the time came, cause it was what five seconds or whatever, however long in the, yeah. the modern time before he came back. And then obviously he had lived his own time. Yeah. Um, wasn't there like, he didn't have like some sort of like clicker thing or whatever, or like a, like the a GPS to get back yeah, right. to the timeline. So that's, I mean, that's second, but what if, called he him was, back. if he got back to the timeline, <clears throat> right. Mm-hmm. Why was he in the fight? Because if, cause he wouldn't have been old. Mm. You got what I'm saying? He only went. He only went with one file. Yep. It wasn't a round trip. I feel That's like why he left the shield. I feel like you're you're missing something. Like there there is an explanation for it, but I can't it's think possible. about it. I mean, but it seems like because even if he did go back, the whole thing of the movie was that they have to be careful because when they do something in the past, it creates an alternate timeline. Mm-hmm. That was the whole rule of the movie. So even if he did go back, the moment he went back and decided to stay instead of doing the stuff with the Avengers. He would have been. He would have created his own parallel timeline, and he would have been in that parallel timeline. Yeah, he, would, he wouldn't have. So if he would, back, if he would have come, on bench. if he would have come back, um, then even the act of him coming back would have created yet another parallel timeline. So he would have not been able to return back to their timeline because the whole act of that that ripple creates an alternate timeline kind of thing. By their own rules, by what... Uh, That's what they what established. The brothers. Any white bald woman explained it. Yeah, so it's it, it's just weird. It didn't make any sense. I, it, it was a very touching moment. It was nice. It was, it was cool. It just it, it didn't make any sense, but I like the movie a decent amount. But actually. hey, it's almost number one. We got to see Captain Marvel get punched in the face. That was, so that awesome. was pretty fucking yeah, that, cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, Thanos yeah. yeeted that bitch out. Here's of your movie, manager, actually. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the coffee machine broke. <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice day. <laughs> That's for not letting me interview you. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> Before we move into a lot of what's going on, because there's a decent amount of news, we got Stadia dropped some more news about what's going on with the streaming service, uh, for good or worse. We'll see. I think it's going to fail, but we'll talk about that. Um, e 3 Xbox announcement has recently dropped, and we got Pokemon news. There's so much. A new Batman was announced. I'm sure you guys have heard of. We can uh, talk about that. Maybe cast our own Batman. We'd see that we'd like to take the line. Um I don't know, looking at you. I'm just kind of surprised it took uh, Microsoft this many years to get to the point where they can all, put a decent offering for E3 to actually put something together. They've t- it's taken them all these years to get enough originals and a wider variety, because they've had indies, but a wider variety of indies, and to have a fleshed out year coming up. Maybe not quite as fleshed out as I think would have been best, but I think it, it's it's telling when it took them this long to the point where they are in the final legs of their console's lifespan, and now they've got like a good E3 and a good year coming up. It's 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 interesting too because a lot of the stuff they showed off that was very cool isn't necessarily stuff that's exclusive to Xbox. They probably just had exclusive uh, rights to revealing cool. it at the thing too so if you think of first party titles there's still a lot we're missing from xbox there's no fable i don't even know if we'll ever get a fable at this point um there's still a few things that do they have rights to that or does molyneux does lionhead lionhead's Lionhead's no longer a thing so i I think i think they have the licensing rights they probably can do something with it at some point i don't know where it it would go if lionhead fell down or uh, i heard somewhere that whoever was possibly making the game or potentially they would there it goes bruce don't even bitch they'd make okay. it um 
more open world and then along with um oh, i got really quiet that was weird but like i think they took away guns um and then they're supposed to it's they're supposed to change it entirely so i don't know who knows I, i'm excited if they do at some point find someone to make Wait, it but no guns in fable yeah no guns well, if I remember correctly, I don't, think the, I don't think the first game had guns. The I think third it started one, with the I second one. Did. It started with the second one. How do you one, create a game that's known for its tight narrative? No, I think it was the third. Like... Uh, I don't know, because it yeah, it's also uh, a very linear um... experience. Yeah. Three was. That's yeah, the only one I've played. Reason. They all played, essentially. Like, three was just an expanded version of two, which was an expanded version of one. I heard three was one of the worst. Is <laughs> like the worst. Three was the worst, but I played it first. Actually, no, I played two first, and then I played three, but I still like three. I remember three our black was... baby dark chocolate. Dude, good times. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was where I was at, Your dude. bun is in my oven. Yeah, dude. And that baby, did it? Did it die? Or was it know. taken away I like, from us? I, like I remember it not it grew ex- up and and, and lived its life. Sophisticated, became a whore, a sophisticated whore, a sophisticated whore. Yeah, I mean, hey, we knew the mailman was black. But that's about it. Mm-hmm. But I was the woman, so I wasn't sleeping around. So don't look at me. I, I don't know. Life I finds a way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude. Okay. <laughs> da, na, 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 da, yeah. Na, na. Black babies. <laughs> Named Dark Chocolate. Dark Chocolate. None of us were black. I don't even know how the fuck that happened. It's like someone rolled a die and it landed on... I guess so. Underprivileged. Hey, dude. You could have, it was just... Uh, yeah, like, nobody's pure, man. You got, like... It's just uh, one of your ancestral genes poked its head out. Yeah. and said, yo, what's up? Just gotta do some 23 and me, You know, and figure shit out. Close the door. Close the door, please. Thank you. Damn. Again. It's what what day's today, Tyler? It's Sunday, I believe. It's Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. What God's do we day. do? What do we do every Sunday? Pray. <laughs> <laughs> pray to, this, to pray temple. to our pray to our, our deities, our, our pagan I think, gods. I think on Sundays we record a podcast. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But I seem at... I seem to live with rude family members. Damn. Dude, why don't you put a sign on your door? Yeah, you know, I don't think it would deter anyone. A sign on the door. Thing, Why don't you lock your door? Your I should sure, actually yeah, well, start locking my door. The problem is, is the dog comes in and out too sometimes. Mm. Well, let's not talk about it. Gotcha. It's not fucking podcast talk. But uh, uh, audience, let you know, uh, fuck Caitlin, and we will move on. <laughs> next right. on the list of things. next on the list of things. Um, Outside of fucking people. Yeah. I think that's. I mean, we'll we'll go ahead and move into Can we the. Talk about that cyberpunk reveal. We will. We will wow. definitely. That was a happy space. That was I cool. want to do intros though. Mm-hmm. We'll move around. Cyberpunk was fantastic though. I'm super hyped. But intros. So uh, last week, Tyler, last few months, boy. Uh, <laughs> I just want to know how everyone's been. How you guys been doing? Uh, I appreciate y'all boy. for hanging out with me tonight, as well as everyone tuning in. But uh, before we move into the meat and potatoes of our show, we're gonna catch up on the hosts. So, Tyler, you you got the most Shit. to probably I wish say. I, yeah, I wish I came with like a script or something. Nah, you I mean, yeah, I've been gone for... None of this show is scripted. I've been, yeah, true story. I've been gone for a few months, so it's like, it's so much to recap. I mean, Endgame was such a big part of my life. I wasn't there for that for you guys on, on the podcast yeah, day. Right. But... Um, Abandoned us. Yeah, that was Left huge. Left us to our there was a, there, were, there were actually several times where I had the opportunity Prior to... to sleep. Yeah, when I had the opportunity, or almost the opportunity to actually like hit you up real quick and be like hey it's sunday um you available for the podcast like i'm available you know but yeah. then shit happens you know life goes on exactly um yeah that really does suck I, i've been i've just been pretty busy with the whole fire stuff and adulting you know, and i do them. yeah I, beat them up. I do have some some amazing news um i'm not a father um before we jump to conclusions um but i, I just recently purchased a home Oh, nice, so, yeah. bro. I got Fucking a house. Oh, very excitement. cool. Super oh, adulting. Oh, yeah, very. So I'm, I'm currently... Adulting level two. So the yeah. baby's next, right? The... <laughs> yeah. Some some time afterwards. Yeah, you'll be Uncle Cal. Uncle <laughs> that Cal. Sound? I'll come. Well, we'll christen him in beer. No, monster, apparently, because everyone... Have you ever seen that meme? Of like, oh, shit, Kyle's coming, and it's like a dude with a bunch of monster cans. No, that's awesome. I, I, I've i never met a Kyle that was like addicted to energy drinks. Yeah. How about, how about Bang? Or Rain? Rain's the new one. Rain's the new energy I, drink. It's pretty popular. Yeah, the Bang's the best tasting, I think. Yeah, know, but they have a new one. Monster Zeros. 
well, the the rain is like the knockoff of bang and it's like i don't know i would place it as bang rain and then now monster like monster had its time it's it's but it's slowly i, I still think the zeros of... are good man the blue one the purple one the red one those are pretty good but i think bang overall is better i've never been a fan of energy drinks so but um yeah. i wasn't but i actually like the way they taste they're tasty it depends because the thing is i'm not a huge on energy i probably have had only four energy drinks in my entire life <laughs> like i can i can name it off my off my yeah, hand probably. here like I, I just i don't really drink them that, that much time and oh two yeah <laughs> i just have <laughs> i just have like have my friends just always drink them and stuff like that like i've sipped on like a few but actually drinking a whole can of one yeah. thank you up though right yeah dude of course thank you up with always. the sip yep. gotcha mm-hmm. and, always and my wiener's out too that is the thing you up wiener out man <laughs> yeah. gotta be classy you gotta stay classy exactly uh I, so you bought a house? That's fucking kick ass. Yeah, yeah dude, dude, it's pretty cool. It's it's being built too. It's a brand new home. Oh fucking. So yeah, dude, be the first to, well, to you. I'll be the first person fancy. to fucking it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of all the things that that's the deeds all. Yeah, you gotta you have to make sure that you That is a good point. You get I'll, to be the one that christen all the rooms. Oh yeah. Yeah. With your shit. Hopefully. Every, hopefully. Yep. Yep. So, <laughs> Every single one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think how I'm gonna do it now. Oh yeah. Yeah, you gotta Lay set mine. up a route. So you gotta speed run it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you get it all done on one night. Oh god. Yeah. With with speed like, running. I'm sure she'll enjoy that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh right. wait. That's all you need. Thirty seconds, right, Tyler? Yep, and then a five minute break in between. Yeah, no. No yeah. more, no See, less. See, God feared horny men so much he gave nutting a cooldown. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. <laughs> I recharge time. <laughs> I'm not ready. Go, go. <laughs> Give me some water. <laughs> <laughs> shit, is it hot here? <laughs> yeah, shit. It's fucking but um yeah so uh, that's... Baby, woman i can't do it without my gatorade <laughs> hold, on, hold on baby i'm about to come <laughs> okay I'm but scared. uh yeah getting, getting a little getting a little weird here now Look, but yeah so uh um, turned into elvis fucking oh i think i think i like very much that's my <laughs> terrible impression of elvis um may he rest in peace yeah wasn't he the one that did the banana and peanut butter sandwiches is that elvis was it was it, it banana was or like skittles fried... Skittles, fried yeah. banana, and peanut butter. Skittles didn't even exist then. That sounds fucking good. Skittles it didn't is. exist. That's how peanut butter into vanilla sent to Benelli sandwich. <laughs> oh my god, that's someone had a you fucking just, stroke. You just made one. a new sandwich. You know that fried gold one where it was like a sub, like an entire loaf of bread, cut in half, filled with a jar of peanut butter, a jar of jelly, an entire thing of bacon. And then it's like wrapped and toasted or something like that. That sounds good as fuck. I lo- I'm uh, just saying I love peanut butter and banana sandwiches. They're really, really fucking you. good. Yeah, that's why they call yeah. it the king. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All yeah. right. So that's yeah, that's house, that's a big one. The house We're fucking in it. Yeah. Good big time. Know. Yeah, it's supposed to be done by the end of September. Nice. Um holy so, shit. Yeah, it, it's it's right fast. The thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just getting ready for the whole packing and that whole getting ready to blow my fucking brains out because it's it's a it's it's a process oh yeah, it's definitely. a lot of stuff Gotta a lot of paperwork and stuff and yeah just it will between moving the paperwork yeah. your money your bank account have you seen the dwindling. full stack of paperwork yet the like eight pounds of paper the full like several printer sheaves worth of paper that you have to go through uh, i've t- I, i'm at the tip of the iceberg and it's enough more than enough for me right now so i can't even imagine the rest so but you know it all pays off in the end I'll yeah. definitely be paying so it off only, in the you end. You only got to do it once, yeah. Yeah. and then you're pretty much set, unless yeah. something bad happens, God forbid. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the big one for me. Um, other than that, yeah, I think it's been about the same. I mean, I've been playing, uh, I just, I was telling Kyle earlier, I was playing God of War, finally, just started playing it, and it's, it's awesome. It's hard fucking, to put that down. It's, 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 it's fucking phenomenal. It's a lot of fucking fun. I've been just, I've been trying to just upgrade um, Kratos, like, as much as I can. And um, I've been taking the story pretty slow right now. Like I, I just got past the, um, the fucking giant ass snake dude, the world serpent or whatever his name oh, is. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, and Leviathan. Is he the? Is he considered a Leviathan? I don't know. Because a Leviathan is, is a Leviathan is, Greek or Nordic? I mean, I don't yeah. remember. Hmm. Yeah, it's Nordic. It's the one. It's the the snake that's it's wrapped. It's the world the serpent. Yeah. 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 So yeah, sure. That's what um, it is. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm well, I'm significantly past that, but it's not too far ahead. Um, I'm like going through the realms and stuff like that. And oh, that was cool. That, that stuff is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah I'm, dude. I'm like, I'm digging it because I love that that history and stuff. Um, and just the twist on it too, playing God of War and having Kratos and his freaking boy. Badass, right? Yeah. But uh, um, mm-hmm. does he ever give the kid a name? <laughs> Well, he has a name, but he never calls him by it. Yeah. 
is it like Ar- Ar- Artrius or something like that? Yeah, Artrius. Yeah. I think at some point, at times. some point, he does call out his name. He does a few times, like in terms because of like, like if it's like they get closer, obviously. Yeah, adventuring together and shit. Yeah. So yeah, God of War. I'm excited for the next one. Um, are they making another one? Hell yeah, dude. Cool. Hell yeah. Hell this game yeah. sold enough copies, it better. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, um, yeah there, well, they, there's a Easter egg in the game in one of the caves where it has like this buff relief on the wall and it's got the Greek gods and if I remember correctly there's like scarring on that section then it's got the Nordic gods then there's like some Egyptian influences and a couple other culture pantheons listed on there so they've got like a road map they can use. Mm. Sounds like they're pulling like an Assassin's Creed. Hopefully Kratos, they do it right. Kratos takes on the world. Yeah. <laughs> and all of Kratos versus all the gods. Yeah, exactly. One big brawl. Mm. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty much it. I, I'm like, I'm on and off with video games, truthfully. I've been like, I've been wanting to play them, but then when I go to play them, I'm just like, I'm tired. I just want to like lay down, look at my phone, do nothing. Oh, bro. I, I feel so, that, but bro. Like, now, you just reminded me of something I forgot, but we got to do it before we go. I have to show you another video. Of course. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have tradition. no clue what's going on, but the video's badass. The music's fantastic. So. Hell yeah. And then movies, you know, I've, I've seen a few things. Like Endgame, like I said. I originally saw Godzilla. Um, I want to see it so bad. I was, I was happy. Um, I'm rather upset of the criticisms that have. Oh, yeah. People are. Yeah. No, too much monster battles, not yeah. enough human. Like, what, what, what the, the problem fuck? with the first movie? And Are you fucking serious. That is that is the premise of uh, Ushan. Have that's, you seen the that's movie? That's why you don't trust critics, bro. Because that's yeah. all critics. No, I, I haven't had the money to go see it. It I'm definitely. See it this weekend. It, it, it's a great monster movie, and it's even a, still, I didn't think there was. I mean, there a, definitely are more monster fights, but I didn't think there was that many where people would be complaining about the um, number critics. of monster fights. I'm like, yeah. I don't, what do critics do besides complain? They piss me off. That's what yeah. they do. They <laughs> fucking. They, I know, but, like. Uh, Fox and one of the other big publications that constantly says dumb shit were two of the ones that came Polygon. out and called them out for it. Polygon, that's the other one. Yeah, they came out dumb and shit called all the time. them out for it. <coughs> mm. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, it was it was a pretty good movie. I was happy. I mean, I love Godzilla and stuff, and I'm I'm excited to see where I actually wanted more after the movie. And I've heard that it like ends on a really high note. It ends, yeah, it ends pretty good. <clears throat> and then there's two um end credit scenes. So or there's a mid credit scene and an end credit scene. I actually didn't stay for the end credit scene, and I looked it up online, and of course they pulled a Marvel, and there was one at the end. And I was like, fuck, because there's a big <laughs> sucks. there's a big reveal that leads to Wonder- several ways they can go about the next movie, and that's my theory of kong versus godzilla i don't feel like it's gonna be and this is by no means a spoiler but this is just what i think because i i could see this happen because i can't see kong beating godzilla in the slightest right but i can't see him fighting and beating godzilla I, I don't in the see slightest. even being like a competition I unless s- like he gets on his back or some shit right and tries to, like rip well, off no, kong's, kong's shoot at him. raw strength is more than godzilla but he doesn't have any breath weapons or anything he just thinks faster well he's he's, he's, he's significantly smaller stronger. though too do we um, have any in canon besides size obviously saying that godzilla um, is not as strong as king kong is there like something in canon Godzilla that... is skyscraper sized and King Kong is about skyscraper sized. He's he not stands on the smaller. top of a skyscraper at one point. It, it, it fluctuates between all the movies, but it's like you... the size of like a. No, yeah, but in the most recent one, which is the the model they would be using, he filled a canyon. Right, he still wasn't even that big though. Compared, you can actually find um like I, I've seen videos on YouTube that, that describe the size, and um he still is dwarfed compared to Godzilla. Right. But the thing is, there might be something that. Uh, apparently he was um a bro, an adolescent he goes super saiyan yeah bro he fucking super, super saiyan donkey kong he's already right. <laughs> either that i mean they could have DK. him radiated and he could get bigger yeah could, something some i seen pulling some bullshit like that be like a fucking hit and run ninja it doesn't matter super but, saiyan but my donkey. theory is i, I can I'm see them teaming up still planning on crossing it over with pacific rim though because I when Pacific Rim was big, that was in plans was to do a crossover with the kaiju and the bots from Pacific Rim and Godzilla, and Niggers. I didn't see how that would work hmm. because the kaiju and Pacific Rim are aliens. They they traveled through a, a, a dimensional rift in the ocean, and the and that world has no history of Godzilla kaiju, and so you've got Godzilla, which is a totally different universe, totally different backdrop, totally different reasons for them being there. 
and it's in, and if they were in the same timeline, Godzilla would be history to Pacific Rim. So they would. There's no way you'd be fighting these interdimensional kaiju and not be referencing battles with the original kaiju. So Mecha Godzilla. I don't. Yeah. I just didn't understand how they would cross it over. Um, I could find, I could see them finding ways because it is a giant kaiju fight. So you don't need to really have a whole lot of plot in there. You just eventually throw some something cheesy just together. Suck and then, Godzilla through the same wormhole that the aliens came through. Yeah, it well, just pom- pops up one day. A lot of the the um, the series of Godzilla films. There's like three or four different series throughout like the the fifties to today. Um, there's like the Heisei. The uh, it's out of order, but it's like the Heisei, the Showa. It's the Showa, Heisei, and then the Millennium series, um, and then whatever they might be calling it now, because Toho is supposed to relaunch their own um godzilla movies now they're coming off Again? another hiatus yeah after shin godzilla back they're in 2016 reboot it after the reboot yep they actually um i believe toho now has a branch in california with hollywood producers so they're actually gonna have not a guy in a suit and more of um what's it called um it's not uh i mean it's not cgi but it's gonna be mo- a motion capture so they have more of that, so they make them look a lot more lively. So um, I expect Andy, Andy Circus being like in these movies now, but because um, he's like that's kind of funny. The, top dog. The, the Japanese fans were thrilled that they decided to go with the guy in a suit instead of doing like the American CGI kind of bullshit. So I wonder. Well, that's how they that's the purpose of motion capture. Is technically it is a yeah. guy. It's a guy moving around, but with obviously all the computer enhancements that you know the suit that they wear. It's not a guy in a rubber suit, but it's a guy moving around. So it gives it gives a certain humanly motion for sure, but it also makes it look better than just straight up CGI. Um, but um, as far as the whole, it inter- does really kind of seem like the next level for Godzilla. Well, yeah, you can't, you Still can't with those human movements. Like it, I, that does make a lot of sense. And who knows? They might still keep some props to um, a guy in a suit for some scenes, as long as it doesn't look too cheesy. Who knows? They might do some sort of like nod or kudos um, to like the older uh, films. But uh, I'm excited to see more Godzilla. You know, as long as they don't pull like a um, the Matthew Broderick film again. The one in uh, that movie's 98. not as terrible as people make it out to be. Oh. It, stand, it, it shouldn't have been called If it wasn't Godzilla. a Godzilla movie, it would have been a phenomenal movie, but because it was Godzilla, people were outraged. Now, I saw that film as a kid. Well, phenomenal is a strong word. Uh, <laughs> to, to some. Yeah, I, mean, I think it, it would have been fun. I thought it was an amazing movie, and I still do, but a lot of people do hate it. Oh Jesus! He's trying to. Sean's, trying to just, get you. Sean's like, no, no, you can't, you can't admit that that movie's amazing. <laughs> it's not phenomenal. I'm trying to silence you with his static. I, mean, I, I think it was a pretty decent movie. I just, I, I don't think it was amazing, but I think it was a decent movie. I think it gets a bad rap. I watched it recently, and it's not good, but it's fun. I can't. I wouldn't call it a good movie, but I'd call it a fun, a plenty fun movie. I mean, it, it, it did what it was setting out to do. It was a fun monster movie it was just a giant iguana beating yeah. the shit out of you. dude in one of the godzilla films actually it was the last one it was called godzilla final wars that came back it came out in like 2004 i believe it was uh it was supposed to be the last film um in the godzilla series before they obviously came back uh they had a they had a um a hey, battle hey, between chill out, godzilla like the actual godzilla the toho godzilla and then what they had named zilla they took the god out of it and they put that creature in from the 98 film up against the actual godzilla and just fucking wreck zilla dude like it was like the biggest fuck you to america right there that was, it was so awesome um just totally annihilated him okay cool yeah. i don't know what the fuck's going on but hey uh, i'm glad you you guys like godzilla <laughs> sorry bro i was no you're good godzilla's good bro and I wonder what's godzilla going on. is life yeah i don't know sean's fucking stroking out here but yeah hey I, i'm glad I, I was able to make it um not only to the podcast but in front of your lovely face um on Thanks. the occasion so. hey Anytime you want to come down, bro. I'm all about that shit. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Sean, how have you been? Anything new to share? Um, I finished a new article for the Streaming Geek on, uh, on uh, Goblin Slayer. I think it's pretty good. It's way too long. And I, it's after shrinking it down and editing it for a week and a half. And I watched a, I watched two uh, foreign films that were pretty good, of which I don't remember the title of either, so there's really not worth mentioning at this point. Oof. I'll put them in the Discord or something, but they were both like horror comedies. Actually, three 
horror comedies. I'm sorry, I forgot about. It. I watched one called Ghost Ship, which was actually pretty decent. I've heard about that. That's uh, an old. That's an older film too, like early 2000s, isn't it? Um, no, this was like I think it was like 2015. Oh, maybe it was another yeah, title. It was, uh, I believe it was Korean, if I remember correctly. Definitely not the same, one you're thinking same of. Same title then, yeah. yeah. Different film. Yeah, it's the same title, totally different idea, though. This was uh, a ship that was being used to smuggle dead bodies for the mafia. Awesome. And the dead bodies were not happy about the fact that they were dead. Hmm. I wouldn't be. Um, but there's a lot of goofy comedy mixed in with. Uh, it's not, it's much less horror. There's definitely some horrific stuff, but there's a ton of like just basically best friends who are on a ship who are constantly screaming and running away from ghosts that aren't even interested in those three best friends. They just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time as the ghosts are trying to find whatever they're looking for uh, kind of situation. There is one guy who has the most intense scream I've ever heard come out of a man. Re. <laughs> <laughs> Normies, get out my stream. And I've been, uh, I've been catching up on uh, Final Fantasy fourteen in Lit. preparation for Shadowbringers. Lit. Fuck, I cannot wait. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. Looking forward to the square. Th- but the only part of E three that I've I've paid absolute attention to for the last like several years has been Square's presentation, and it has always been a disappointment for like the last three four years. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what they're going to open up with this one, considering they passed a few birthdays and anniversaries and such with nothing to show for it. So I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to do this year. But otherwise, no, I haven't been up to much. I'm still in recovery mode from all the money I spent at Megacon. Nice. I do have uh, two items on the way from Japan. They just released about three weeks ago. Um because I, I started that collection for Darling and the Franks of all their figures. Oh, yeah. Body pillows. And I have... Too. Yeah, I've got Zero Two, and I've got Strelitzia, and I have Ichigo... Uh, no, I also have Delphinium, and I have Ichigo, and I have the rabid Strelitzia on the way. The Strelitzia that's all red. Yeah. I have that one on the Upgraded way. Graded version. Um, but no, my life has been completely on, on a... You, you definitely win on the... Week activities, Tyler. You, well, monthly you activities. Are, it's been a monthly few. activities. You're still yeah. light years ahead of where you beat, I'm at. You went on the intro. So mm-hmm. good for you. Yeah, Although yeah, I haven't said anything yet. yet. Yeah, so me. I cured cancer and yeah, but... helped solve world hunger. So yep. fuck you. And took it in the ass once or twice. Yeah. Hey, to save to save humanity, That's save cancer and end world hunger. hunger. Whatever. Yeah. Hey man. Bribing? That's where it's at. Get them African warlords solving problems. I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. So I recently got into not a debate. What the fuck I was gonna say? I did. I had a uh, a. We came to a what's the word? Coming to a like America. Uh, <laughs> when you have two people, an agreement. A an agreement. God, I don't know what wow. word. Oh, yeah. So me and my friend, other friend Tyler Penland. You know Penland. How's he doing? Yeah, he's good. He's good. Um, he plays ESO, Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah. And uh, we used to play that. Uh, and then we started Final Fantasy. And I'm like, wow, this is so much better than ESO. Uh, but he's like, I will give ESO an- or Final Fantasy another try if you download ESO because they're all playing on PC. And I'm like, sure. So I've got, I bought ESO for 10 bucks, the base game. And I've been playing through that. It's about as much as I remember it. It was It's good. But, like, it's just Final Fantasy is so much better in almost every facet. There's, like, a few things. Like, the itemization and customization and freedom in ESO is, is like, top-notch. Like, getting, like, builds and creating how you want to play and all these different ways to play uh, characters, that freedom is really good. But on But with that, there's their cons. So, like... Um, you can get in trouble for not sticking to if trying to do end game content, but not sticking to certain builds like the stronger things. Whereas Final Fantasy, if you're playing your character, you're playing your character. You have all the you will eventually get all the tools necessary to that class to do what you need to do. Whereas you can be a healer in ESO, but if you're not following a specific path, you can you can suffer later because you don't have what you need because the game doesn't give it to you. And that that's it's it's here or there. Uh, I like, but it also makes things harder to balance because there's so much to manage with items and classes and all that. 
Um, whereas Final Fantasy, it's easier to manage those that that balance. Also, the 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 design in Final Fantasy, the class design is some of the best I've ever experienced in MMO. They they do a fantastic job making like deep, relatively easy to understand, but like deep classes that reward skilled play uh, for the most part. Uh, if you people, if anyone tuning in actively plays, you can argue that with Shadowbringers, some of that might be going away with some of the homogenization, homogenization of the healer classes. But I still think, to a degree, like they have some of the like most intensive rotations out of any MMO. And my friend Nick, who played WoW when he came over, that was like one of the first things he said. He's like, "Wow, the class design in this game is fucking top notch." Um, so uh, that's what's been going on. I've still been playing Final Fantasy here and there, doing like some like reputation grinding and stuff like that but i've been playing eso a decent amount i'm like level 20 something but that's like just the tip of the iceberg it's okay uh i like the again the itemization and the building like and the freedom to do what you want kind of thing but i think the game looks uglier the music is not as good um i haven't paid any attention to the story but i think the story is more of a personal taste because i've heard the story in eso is good but if you're looking for a Western RPG story, ESO. If you're looking for an Eastern RPG story, Final Fantasy, obviously, because that's where that's their inspiration. That's where they fucking come from. So that's that. Uh, recently re-downloaded Apex because they announced a waifu was coming to the game. Mm-hmm. They're adding a female character to it. So I'm like, I deleted it because it pissed me off. And I'm like, I, that, okay. Well, they already had female characters before. Yeah, but they're ugly. These aren't. Damn, bro. That's, yeah. that's It's not racist because I didn't say anything about the skin color. But they are ugly. Fuck. To be honest, this one this one's only pretty in comparison to the others. You know, they might be pretty on the inside, bro. You just got to like That's fine, but I up. I'm not here to get <laughs> I'm here for the looks. I'm here for the looks. I'm not here to get get used to Kyle just wants to see some titties. What kind it? of window shopping that's they what do? Saying. Yeah. yeah, sure. Uh so I might Oh, I did download. I played a few games last night. We actually we were kicking ass bro uh we we were, we were taking names eating butthole the game know, is surprisingly that. still like fun to play on the occasion yeah I, that, like that's the gunplay is phenomenal mm-hmm. it's fucking fantastic well after they fixed the patch too with like the uh the hit boxes and stuff or some oh, of the yeah, characters got it better. yeah it's it's much better like i remember gibraltar and um, but even from launch there was like still problems with it but still the gunplay always felt really solid obviously respawn titanfall some of the best fps's out there um Sad that we won't be getting any Titanfall 3 soon, or for, or for a decent amount of time, but still, maybe after the Star Wars game comes out, which um, I'm excited, but like everything I've seen about that has been very I'm cautious. par. Like, it's average. We haven't got a really good Star Wars game, especially not a, a Battlefront, you know, a non-Battlefront game. Yeah. When's the last major Star Wars EA. game that's been out? Once again, we haven't gotten a really good Star Wars game. Mm-hmm. Overall. Yeah. I mean, the last one that was like... Really, like, somewhat good was was probably... Um, if you consider, like, SWOTOR, the MMO, mm. that's, like, the most recent stuff. And I've heard that was good. I mean, it wasn't a good MMO, but for, like, single-player story, it was really good. I'd love another KOTOR game. That's the Old Republic. It'd be cool to see them go back to the old... The, uh, the old form... Well, maybe not entirely back to the old form, but to resurrect that franchise. I'd like to see, to like, a... The, the Star Wars role playing game again. Yeah, like mm. another deep RPG in Star Wars. Although I always felt weird with that because, like, you have, like, it, it, it feels weird in the. It, it, they have to make concessions, obviously, because they're making it a RPG. So you can't just hit someone with a lightsaber and they fall over. But the idea of you playing a game and you hit someone with a lightsaber and they don't fall over kind of thing, like, you don't see them get cut in half, just something about that, it feels weird. And again, it's it's just concessions for the RPG genre. You obviously don't want anyone being too OP. But um, did you guys enjoy? They could build one like the original. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, you're you're fine. I was just I was saying, did you guys enjoy or play um any of the Unleashed games out of the two? I played both. Yeah, the first they were one okay. was good. The second one was garbage. Yeah. Well, I liked. I felt like the the um, at least the, the the action, like the the controls, and and like I think the the force powers were a little bit more updated compared to the... I, I like the story of the first one. The second one, like, had the better graphics. That was all I really had going for it. The story I didn't really care for as much. But I thought the the combat and the gameplay was a little bit more... Um, I felt I felt a little bit cleaner, if I recall correctly. You I mean played, moving from one to two? Yes, but oh, okay. I did play two on the Xbox, and I played 
I'm pretty sure I played the first one. I want to say it was on the Wii. So we had the motion control. Oh. So, oh, so, yeah, that's, that's, one was a so I couldn't. I, yeah. So then not disregard. the best, not the best comparison there. <laughs> Plus they chopped out some levels and stuff. The problem with the second one amongst the many things was the game design was much, much worse. They relied on, um, uh, quick time events for everything it was yeah. the same enemies over and over it, like just cycling the method fight the grunts fight a few more grunts platforming fight some more grunts platforming again and, and the, like the set pieces were dull then you had the boss that you would slash at a few times do a quick time event it would drop then you did another half of the level then the big boss that you would defeat super easily the only event that I liked was that one in the second one where you went into that one room that was like a, like a mall almost, where there was like two stories and you were jumping between the two different stories to take out enemies. The design there was nice, but again, it was just busy work with by shoving a bunch of enemies in. There just wasn't any intelligence behind it. Like the pacing and everything else was much better in the first one. The story was a little wonky. They tried to make it fit in and be canon, but it really didn't work as canon very well. But I, I still think it was really, really fun. Okay. I think if they learned the lessons from how fun that combat was and how powerful and badass they made you feel in those games and brought that into the new game, like Kyle and I discussed this a few episodes back, but if they brought that into the new game, but started you off more rudimentary and built you up to that process, I think that would be cool as shit. Um, how do we even fucking get here? New Star Wars. Yeah, how do we get there sorry, though? What I was saying. Uh, you know. How do we get there though? I don't know. You're just talking I... about new games, I think, and then oh, okay. Star Wars well, brought up. Uh, so Apex. Oh, I, yeah. I th- yep. Um. Fuck. What else? Oh, co- I think they should do a co-tour without Jedi. Okay. That's Another good, bounty hunter easy game way would to be cool. Way around this, around the lightsabers by not having them. And you could have all kinds of different other classes from smugglers to bounty hunters. You could even be hunting down a dark Jedi. And if you try to confront them head on, they do cut you down with a lightsaber without a problem. So you've got to work your way toward that goal or something. But if you did it with that system or you made it a little bit like Mass Effect or something, you know, give people a a dip into the Star Wars universe. Maybe one that doesn't involve Jedi because there's so much other good stuff in there. Give people a way to fuck aliens. Like Mass Effect, mm-hmm. dude. If I could be uh, a fucking Jawa yeah. riding a Tauntaun, sure. take my fucking money, bro. <laughs> DLC though, DLC. It's yeah. EA. Yeah. Next thing you know, it's gonna be like a fucking Switch exclusive, and it's Tauntaun racing. Oh my god. Okay. Um, what else? Me and Sean have been playing a game called Yuppie Psycho on stream. Uh, it's been very Yuppie enjoyable. Psycho. It's a kind of surreal horror game. More, much more of a narrative experience than the horror. The horror comes in every once in a while, but. Everything from the characters to the environments to the way... The, basically, the idea to give you a very slight idea. It's a lot of puzzling. First day of work, oh, you get to work, um, you find out that uh, your job's a little bit less than normal from like a normal job, and uh, you get hired to kill a witch. You sign a contract to kill a witch, and that is what your goal is for that first day of work. What kind of fucking job do you get hired <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, and you are not, by the way, qualified for this job. Yeah, you are you no are like, way fresh out of college the first job it's a major corporation you're all excited you make it in and you realize you've just stepped into the twilight zone where like rod serling had a baby with cthulhu like it's just not not an ideal workplace (laughs) at all Yeah, sorry, we're figure, trying to figure shit out on this side. Trying to get uh, comfy over I was here. like, wow, like I get, they're fucking crickets, Jesus. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you could like, if you you could just tilt it. I don't know, it's, it's yeah. But, I got you, bro. But when else do we have a, a, a professional episode? Um, so I, I'm, again, really enjoying, I love the art style. Again, if you were... Uh, like a few years back on YouTube, if you ever got into anything that the bigger YouTubers are playing, the RPG Horror Maker games, so like Ib, this is uh, a lot like that. Mad Father, stuff like that. If any of that was your like your cup of tea back then, watching those playthroughs, this will be something that'll be right up your alley. It feels like a modernized version of that, and it's, it's really just a more, it's heavier on the comedy elements. 
Oh yeah, much definitely. Uh, much definitely. Most definitely so. Most definitely. It was. And also, you don't want to have Kyle at the controls because he's got this uh, bizarre habit of randomly doing this premature completion with conversations where they'll start talking, and then he just jumps through twenty-two of the speech bubbles. I thought you were about to say premature ejaculation. That's he just it's, prematurely it's ejaculating already. That's. A, it's it's I I know I now know what the female feels like in that situation because Kyle will go up he'll start talking to someone I'm like oh uh, shit this is too juicy <laughs> and this motherfucker will buzz all the way through the conversation thinking he can start it over and then it turns out that it's a it's one of those uh, important uh, plot conversations that you can't repeat yeah it's not like important enough times. where it it halted our progress but. It was still important information. Um, but great game. Uh, really fucking fun. If you guys are interested in seeing us, me and Sean, play through it, there are VODs on Twitch. You can check those out um, and see our, our playthrough of Sterling it. voice acting. Yeah, get an idea of what mm. it was. If you ever tuned in for the Red Strings Club or the Cyberpunk Bartending uh, action games when we did those playthroughs where we did a lot of the voice acting, it's the same idea. That's what we were doing. Very fun. Um, super exciting game. Excited to get back to it at some point uh, when we when I get the time at night. Uh, at night. At night. So it was. It, it's fucking fun. And finally, uh, Thought Patrol after dark. Yeah, <laughs> I finally have a date set in stone for the surgery uh, for my jaw. So that is coming. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm getting maxillofacial surgery. Bro, I can jaw. break it right now. We can yeah. fix this. Let's yeah. Do this. So they're going to break it, cut bone out, move it around, put some plates in, and uh, it happens. Yeah, the, the idea is that so he can unhinge his jaw and swallow babies whole. Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> so I do have a, my bite is off by a, quite a bit. And a it can't margin. be it can't be fixed with like bands and braces. What? So let's say like. What if you didn't do that? Like, what are the consequences? They said the biggest, any? the biggest consequence is the joints can wear down, the cartilage in the joints, Ooh. in your jaw, and it could lead to chronic migraines. Locked jaw. Oh, that would suck later on. Yeah, exactly. So they say it's best to get it out of the way now. There's a lot of people that I've talked to that have gotten the procedure, and people that haven't, and it's 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 a whole different world. So this will this will be happening actually on the twentieth in eleven days. Damn, dude, are you so, nervous? Yeah, <laughs> this would be the first surgery surgery I've done that I've actually had to go under general anesthetic for. So I am yeah, that's not hyped about it. I've never had that before. So then it's like, what's your diet composed of? Because like you can't fucking chew on anything. So Liquid, they, like, mashed potatoes, anything you don't have to chew. Also, you have to be careful bro. with stuff that's like grainy because you can't get that into any of the uh, areas that Crevices. are open. Um, because it'll lead to infection. So a lot of uh, blended food. <laughs> Dude, any mouth surgery must really suck. Like I had a, I had a friend in the in the fire department. She actually had um, she had to have her wisdom teeth removed. Actually, it wasn't her. It was my other friend. They got him done at like the same time, and he got his wisdom teeth removed. And apparently, you can't um, like do certain things, otherwise you will really mess it up or oh, create yeah. like air pockets. So like one thing is you can't your either sinuses. you can't yeah so you can't um, you can't blow your nose. Apparently, is one of them. And he like had a really stuffy nose. He said one time, and he like grabbed a napkin and just went full fucking horn like blew his nose and like it was he said it was bad like so yeah you have to go back and i don't know what the procedure is after the fact but you have those air pockets in there yeah depending on how deep the roots are in your gums mm. they could lead into your sinuses so when they pull them out and extract all the teeth i went through the same thing um they will leave little air pockets in there and it's to prevent just infection in the sinuses and um I had to go through that same shit and I was working and I couldn't lift anything heavy. You couldn't mm. bend over too far. You can't like your head had to be above your chest at most times, especially the first day. Um, so you don't have blood leaking into any, any areas and shit like that. But I, I, I that wasn't fun either. Cause that was all in preparation to do this surgery. Uh, Cause they had to do that before they put the braces on them with the braces as the surgery is performed. Um, that's all right. I'm gonna come down to South Florida and take care of my boo while he's recovering. Oh, thanks, fam. My Ice mom, cream. my mom, she was so fucking funny. I was sitting. She's like, "Is there a way we could get your computer in bed?" <laughs> I'm like, no, Yo, unfortunately not. Year. But uh, I got like the PS. Aww. I still got like the PS4 and the Switch, so we'll have we'll have plenty of stuff to do. And they say they say you can be back up and moving around and, and okay in like three days. Oh, that's not too three bad. to five, and then. 
they said, but just to be safe, I took two weeks off of work because they say if something goes wrong, it could take a little bit longer. Makes it so, worse. Also, one really good thing is at this time, the game that the game that me and Sean have been playing, Shadow Final Fantasy fourteen, they give you an idea of a shitload. I have fifteen hundred hours in it. That's a shitload. <laughs> so, um, it's a it's releasing a new expansion, and actually, the early access for it is on the twenty eighth. So I will hopefully be not inebriated and able to mm-hmm. play it and uh, enjoy it for the first few days that it's out, which will be super fucking exciting. Um, but yeah, not looking forward to it at all. Yeah, I can't believe it's 11 days away and we're at the end of today. So it's technically 10. So it's, I'm counting the days. It's going to be scary. They're going to put me in holding, put an IV in me and then knock me the fuck out mm. and then rip my mouth apart. He's going to like go. wake up and like, his like cum be everywhere, like yeah. dried crusty crumb, uh, crumb come <laughs> all over him, and like he's gonna wake up in like some fucking hospital bed that's like outside Missing somewhere. A kidney. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but my least favorite part about all this is gonna be the diet afterwards. Because yeah. yeah, everything's gonna have to be like either soft, so like pudding, Jello, or cum. Yeah. You know what you should do is you should just pierce your tongue while you're at it because that's the same kind of diet I had to go on when I got my tongue pierced. Nah, I'm not about piercings. But... And it helps with fellatio. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go, Sean. <laughs> it show does. I heard that in a movie somewhere. I can't remember which movie, but yeah. I don't know from uh, offhand experience. But. So, I'm glad you all could join me. It's already an hour in, and we've only done our intro. So, I'm going to try and push us a little bit forward here. Uh, but, you good? Housekeeping. Housekeeping. I put chocolates in your pillow. pillow. Mm. So, we stream on Twitch, as I said before. Twitch.tv forward slash Thought Patrol. If you want to check us out, uh, to do it. Anywhere from once a week to a few times a week to every other week, depending on my schedule because it's shit. But um, also, if you want to talk to the host, hang out with the community, feel free to join our Discord. Uh, Excellent place to either get into contact with us, hang out. Awesome community there. We appreciate everyone that is in our Discord, and we'd love to hear from more of you guys. Uh, Also, you can leave comments on YouTube or the respective podcast service you're listening to. If you want to respond to anything, how hyped are you for the games that we've seen so far from E3? By the time you guys see this, there'll probably be a lot more that uh, you guys will be excited for. Um, Also, feel free while you're there. If you want to subscribe, get us every Tuesday at 8 a.m. It'll help us out a lot. Get that uh, consistent viewership. It means a lot to us. Also, feel free to follow us on Twitter at Thought Patrol PD to get announcements. Same thing with Facebook, Thought Patrol Podcast. Also, our sister Facebook page, The Streaming Geek, as Sean said earlier, where you could, there'll be reviews going up for any streamable content uh, for you to kind of engage in conversation with. Uh, let Sean know how he's doing with that, how his reviews are doing, how his writing's doing, uh, what you guys think of those shows, and again, just engaging in conversation. That's all we hope for here. And finally, if you want to help us out, have a show up more in um what's them called what are the things called algorithms feel free to leave us a review on itunes what you think of the show what you think we can do better with what you think we can do worse in i don't know but uh mm-hmm. just anything to give us some feedback we'd appreciate it so let's move forward we have a mailbag Hello. question coming from sam he says all right lame tards fuck you fuck you sam <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was his like jock voice. I don't remember what it was that changes every week, but I'm back with a nerdy Yo, question. Right, Yo, yeah, bro. <laughs> it sounded like you said libtards. <laughs> <laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> I'm back with a nerdy question because that's what you weebs love, right? Of course. The new poke this isn't but okay. The new Pokemon games technically <laughs> they're Japanese in origin. The new Pokemon games are slated to release in the fall and the hype couldn't be more real. The new features and play mechanics seem to favor more interactivity and cooperation. The Dynamax battles look cool, but let me ask you, does a gimmick sell you on a game or does it make you want to stay away with a thirty nine and a half foot pole? Give me your thoughts, you thoughts. Now I expect a good answer. Now I expect a good answer. Or I'll Uber myself to your house and take my fist on a smorgasbord of knuckle sandwiches to your faces. You guys are great. P.S. ReZero is becoming one of my favorite anime. I can't wait to see how the season ends. It is fantastic. Uh, Episode 15, everybody. The Twister episode. Right, Tyler? I remember Mm -hmm. you being... I remember you seeing that live and screaming and rolling off my couch. That Mm. was was an interesting uh, Um, day. I still have PTSD. Yeah, dude. Anytime he sees a twister <laughs> board, bro, it goes into a shock. Bro, it's just fucking, that changes a man. It, that was a fucked up episode, bro. Yeah, it was. That that show can be titled to uh, watch Subaru suffer, and Subaru. you'll be pretty good. So, so uh, Sam, do, do we ever finish that show? 
No, I don't think so. I don't think like, with me. New I don't think you did. No. I did. New season is coming out, which is exciting. So Sam, you're just in time. But uh, real quick, uh, my thoughts of Pokemon. Um, I love everything I've seen. It also looks like there's more of a focus on open world, which is really cool. Almost like Breath of the Wild, some of the shots. And it looks like there's also kind of going back to what uh, Let's Go Poke- Pikachu was, where they have Pokemon in the overworld. So Tyler, you know how before you'd run through grass and you'd get into a random battle? It looks mm-hmm. like there's areas in this game where you could actually see Pokemon walking around in the world, like the anime and stuff like that. So that's super fucking exciting. It looks all gorgeous. All the character models look awesome like they always do. Everyone's looting all the girls to shit. So that's always exciting. Um, Rule 34 knows no bounds. Yeah, like there's that one post where it's like, you're like in like an ocean somewhere and you're going around like to like the other side of an island somewhere and it's like you you come across a chick that battles you and she's like, oh, I have this bikini on where I hide all my Pokeballs. <laughs> like, I hope I can see that God shit. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. The sad like, part is, is it doesn't matter what property is getting looted. It's all the same fucking way. Like, you, it's the same thing every fucking time. Oh yeah, bro. And also they take characters that have no tits, give them fat racks. Mm-hmm. Make them thick as fuck. No, I might have to buy this game. Yeah. Well, it's not like that in the game. Just look up Rule 34. You'll be fine. There you go. It's, 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 it's free. Those weird giant torpedo boobs that are so terrifying. Yeah, dude. Something that will knock you out if you like fall on it or something. Pure, mm. Poke your eye out with a nipple. That's never fun. So, uh, but I, again, I love everything I've seen. The Dynamax battles do look like a gimmick uh, for you guys who don't know. They've, they've done gimmicks before in Pokemon. Like they had the Mega Evolutions that you can do where you could once per battle evolve a Pokemon into a second stage. They get better, their stats get better, and they have access to new abilities. Um, to a degree, it was a gimmick. It wasn't fully fleshed out. If you think about it, there's almost 900 Pokemon. Only 50 of them got Mega Evolutions. So to give you an idea of the percentage of what it might be a gimmick. I think it was more of a gimmick than anything else. But these Dynamax battles look cool. It looks like any Pokemon can do a Dynamax change. We don't know yet. But basically, it turns your Pokemon into a Kaiju. Oh. So you... you... So from the uh, perspective of somebody who doesn't give a flying fuck about Pokemon, have Uh they bothered balancing uh pokemon at all or is it basically just the same shit they've been the whole time they just add stuff to some of them every so often uh they balance pokemon every every generation so poke the changes to the actual battle systems happen every generation so if you go if you went from like generation one to generation two um initially there was attack defense special and speed i think I think those are the first initial stats from gen- from season or generation one to generation two. They added, they took the split, the special stat, they split it. So now there's a special attack, special defense. So every generation to a degree, there are changes being made to the meta of Pokemon and they do a decent job of keeping it competitive to a degree. And there's always like VGC, there's always a, there's always a competition going around Pokemon. People actually play Pokemon competitively and they build their teams and they, they do pay attention to that crowd because it is pretty decently large. Um, although there's a lot of casuals that just play Pokemon because it is something that they grew up with as well. Uh, me being one of I them, think that's the majority of the audience. I, I've taken Pokemon not 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 ever to a tournament, but I've taken it seriously to the degree where I was uh, EV training and doing all that and. I never did like any Ivy stuff, which is basically like having Ditto rape a bunch of Pokemon until you get like a perfect stat come out of it. Um, <laughs> I don't think I just, it's Ditto; it's others. It's but a like, bad image in my head. Yeah, but basically, uh, he just envelops around them and then poops out another Pokemon. Another rule thirty-four. <laughs> but mm. um, I I did EV training to a degree, especially once they made it easier. But they've they've done a lot of things here and there to change the meta and balance here and there because some pokemon would gain ability access to abilities some would lose abilities from their pool especially as we got as the game began to form into its niche between like three four and five as well so yeah definitely they do it a lot I'm i'm so used to people talking about how like certain pokemon are just garbage uh, so then so it just kind of made me wonder if they bothered uh but there's always balancing them they'd be especially with 900 you know i imagine that's pretty the, there's massive also they have undertaking they have tiers as well i don't know exactly what they are i know it's like let me see vgc tiers uh 
So while Kyle looks that up, I lost 50 bucks to the that one time to our dear friend Antonio. Uh, he EV trained and I did not. I didn't. I said fuck it to that, and he like destroyed me. He will shit on you. Oh yeah, big time. What are the VGC tiers? Okay, let's see. Under, I know one of them is underused. I'm just looking for the the thing. Underused VGC. Uh. Comprehensive introduction to VGC. Jesus. Yeah, there's a lot here. Uh, I don't care about typing. I don't care about stab. I don't care about moves. I don't care about abilities, nature, stat modifiers, individual value, effort value, items, doubles and singles, know the meta, what's in a set. What? Where the fuck are the... God damn it. Nice Q-pop. John got into a dungeon. Yeah. Okay, that's not actually giving me anything. It's like underused something, overused, and Ubers, which means Ubers are where legendaries are allowed. But they have, like, tiers. So some Pokemon, even though they're shitty, if a Pokemon's too good, it won't be allowed in an underused set because it's a Pokemon that's deemed too strong by the community for that set. And I'm sure they have judges in play that deem that. So you could have shitty Pokemon prevail in a different tier because they're in underused. Or in uh, overused, you can have more of the average, and then there's higher ranks. I don't know how many there are, but I know that that's kind of how they do it. So yeah, you can have a shitty Pokemon still show up in tournament play. It actually happens quite often, because people always try and kind of come up with like new techniques or kind of crazy ways to change the way the battle, the battle goes. So you see it happen often. So they, that's kind of how it's built around that to make sure that shitty Pokemon still get time here and there. Some Pokemon are just garbage and they don't do it, but they don't work. If you make everything good, then everything else is average. So there's no like, it's nice. It's better having like a, a spectrum of like shitty to decent. Um, but yeah, a lot of the changes are like managing move pools. Sometimes they manage stats as well. But uh, what... The Dynamax battles look cool. You turn your Pokemon to a Kaiju. You literally take the Pokeball out, and there's a thing on your bracelet that makes it huge. And you throw a giant-ass Pokeball, and then this big fucker comes out of it, and they shoot, shoot like these catastrophic moves at each other. It's crazy. Um, and then they also a- introduced a multiplayer element, so you can cooperatively fight one of the Pokemon that are Dynamaxed with your friends, mm-hmm. with like three others. It'd be cool if they introduced like raid mechanics which is easily possible in a turn-based game. I doubt they'll do it because it's Pokemon and, and they make them as casual as possible. So they can't have anything that might in, include some type of difficulty because fucking Game Freak, they got to make the game for eight-year-olds eight year olds and 20-year-olds. Um, uh, so gimmicks. Will a gimmick sell you on a game? I really think it comes down to how well the gimmick's implemented because anything can be a gimmick zelda does it almost every every time they release a game there is a gimmick in the zelda in that game that's just done really well where it doesn't feel like a gimmick like in wind waker it was the boat the whole idea was moving around the open world in the boat that's technically a gimmick but it's just implemented well and it it, it, the the way they build the 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 in-game mechanics around it it works like these Dynamax systems are a gimmick. It depends on how well they're implemented to see if uh, I'll enjoy it or not. But I'll never buy a game off of a gimmick because you never know. You can't always tell how fully it will be implemented into a game. Motion control is a gimmick. <laughs> and look how well the Wii sold well, but doesn't mean it was a good console. I think it was more because of the the. Actually, no, it sold well because of the gimmick. Never mind. Yeah, I think it's because it was, it was like reason. family friendly kind of thing. But do you have have you guys ever been per- like shovelware? Have you guys ever been persuaded by a gimmick? Maybe when I was like five years old, when oh, yeah, <laughs> everything is you know, because that's the thing you want something flashy and poppy that catches like a kid's eye and it's like, well, that's cool. Like the like, like you said with, the, with with the Wind Waker, it was a talking fucking boat. It was yeah, who doesn't want a talking fucking boat right? as a friend, right? You can you can take him around. He like sails around, and you also like find treasure with him and shit like that. It's just big ass robotic claw that comes up and like grabs treasure and shit like that. It's pretty cool. And he talks to you, and he's like, was he like the king of red lions or something like that? Oh no, he wasn't he the actual. He was uh, Zelda the previous. Um, he was, he like, was like, like Arena of Times king. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean stuff like that. Uh, I think I think it depends. <laughs> yeah, right. You're fucking. But um, I don't know. It it depends on. 
what the gimmick is based around off of i mean like a zelda game i'd probably end up buying regardless but um uh i don't know nowadays i look i do a little more research do you before own I, the switch yes then you fell uh, why do you own the switch is it because you can play Breath it on of the, the wild oh, okay because <laughs> it says it's not 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 for the fact that well okay in, in a sense that, that that to me is just an addition um i like the fact that i can play on the go but if you ask me how often do i play it on the go not a whole lot i, mean, I, yeah. I play more on the, on the dock itself than, than you know most of the time i use the switch for i'm at work but i'm playing games on my phone and i'm using the switch for youtube <laughs> <laughs> so, hey man just multi multi-device user that's all it is but yeah um i don't know like I, nowadays especially because things are you know i don't have mommy and daddy to pay for anything out of pocket now it's like i don't get whatever just i buy want whatever the fuck you want bro so yeah it's, i mean yeah sure yeah. I, I have the freedom to do that without my parents tell me no but at the same time now it's my own damn money so it's like i look into a little bit more rather than just going and you know buying it off of instinct because something looks cool like that I googled gimmick and it just says it's a trick or device intended to attract attention, publicity, or business. Well, then everything's so a I fucking gimmick. That, yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. A lot of things. You watch, are, you yeah. watch, a, you watch, okay, E3. E3 is a fucking gimmick. Uh, Boom. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess. Well, no. I just, I just said you can call everything a fucking funny. gimmick. It's I, I a guess. a fucking gimmick because you guess. watch trailers and hey, trailers hey, are. Calm down. Trailers are not. Scream. We're inside. Sorry. Inside voices. Okay. It's a, it's a ASMR. Welcome to my ASMR stream. I'm Juice and Chips. Yeah, so now we're going to talk about Juice and Chips. e 3 is a fucking gimmick. You suck my fucking big ass. Okay, car. okay, okay. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's. Everything's a gimmick. Maybe look at it the same way. <laughs> Our life's a gimmick. There you go. <laughs> Dude, life is, bro. Life is a gimmick. All right. Um, Sean, do you have anything that comes to mind? In, uh... Sex is a gimmick. There you go. There was that uh, that 3DS vampire game that used sunlight. I thought that was Game Boy Advance. Uh, Game Boy Advance, whatever. Or Game Boy Color, I don't remember. You have all those different color um, Pokemon re-releases. Nintendo is especially notorious for going hard with with the gimmicks. Balls to the wall. You know, uh, from goofy controllers to, you know, uh, polishing up, con- like, different exactly. types of control schemes and one, shit. Like, that's all... One example? That's kind of like their wheelhouse. To buffer your point, bro. 100%. There is a game on the Switch where you can fondle an anime girl and the controllers are designed to vibrate in a way that is to simulate the actual act of grabbing a boob. That scientists work on this. That is defined as Nintendo's approach to to gaming. <laughs> it's gimmicks. <laughs> if they create a game where your sole purpose is to fondle boobs and get a r- pseudo realistic experience of it, again, all in quotations. That is how Nintendo takes their approach t- to video games. Damn so. it. Damn it. Damn it. That attracted my attention. I just couldn't buy it because it was on the Japan store. I wish like I could have been one of those guys testing this. Exactly. Like being the, the, the original Bring in the tester. real titties. Yeah, yeah, bring in the real titties. And then I, will, I will decipher and decide how this should, how, how this should be yeah. conducted. Exactly. I'm sorry, Sean. Continue. No, no. I mean, there's, there's so many that I don't know the point in trying to list them all. Oh yeah, uh, there's a ton of them. But I mean, and it's it's different than having mechanics too. Like gimmicks are usually, they normally don't add a ton to the playthrough. It's it's normally more flash than substance. Yeah, it's like sole purpose is to uh, attract attention, not make the game any yeah. better. Um, but sometimes a gimmick does improve things. I just I think that from a from a business perspective it's more of a tool for selling things than it is for enjoying them yeah that's the feeling that i get uh, but um i played tons of things that were sold off of gimmicks and enjoyed the shit out of them so yeah same <clears throat> i don't think I've i ever... remember uh, there was one um called uh fuck azure dreams okay and uh, all it did was mix together um, gimmicks that were like uh, not like gotcha, but there were like there was a, a Pokemon gimmick where okay. you were you would go into the tower, find eggs, bring them back, hatch them, and, you and then you bring these monsters with you, and the monsters would follow you 
and give you bonuses and help you fight things and so on, and you'd raise them as pets. There was also a dating gimmick where when you'd come back from your ventures into this tower, you would have these dialogue trees, and if you perform certain things, and you would end up with these people falling in love with you, and you could build up the city. There's just a ton of shit in it, but it was all very, very cheesy. Oh, hello. Um, but excellent. I, I had a lot of fun with that game, but it was all very gimmicky. So that reminds me of... I played uh, a lot of stuff. That reminds me of a game called Conception, where it was a JRPG, and your goal, you didn't actually have sex with anyone. But you like touched hands in the ceremony and you pooped out a star child, is what it was called. And those children you would take into the heat of battle and have them test their metal against enemies. You literally took these children into battle and then they would all have classes. You could name them, choose their gender, whatever. Um, and, you, and you would put the, throw them in battle. I had a few kids die on me. Uh, it's part of the game. <laughs> it's kind of morbid. Yeah, it is. It. It's, it's pretty fucked up. But they were more like familiars because you didn't actually have sex. They didn't make the cut. Yeah, but you. Uh, yeah, you're you're right. They were uh, homunculi. And, and then I fed and I fed them to the mother. So like, what the, the mother ate the children. What kind of the game ones is that were weak, <laughs> not fucking around. But it was like <sighs> you spent time at the school talking to all these girls, and then you could if you got if you got like. If you talk to them like three times, I guess, because that's how it works, they'd let you do the ceremony with them. So you went and hold hands. One of them would make like a, an O face, and then you poop out a star child. Dude, I wish relationships were that easy where you can just talk to them three times and boom, you're in a relationship. Like, exactly. Well, sometimes it does happen that way, but not, most of the time, most of the time, it's, you, like, it's a building It's process. like trying to catch a Pokemon on the Pokeball. You wait for the fucking... They don't th yeah, it's got to ding three times. Yep, if not, then... Um, Fuck it, got away. But yeah, I remember. I remember Hit it with the that game's actually on the Switch. I think, if I remember correctly, I might pick it up again. No, it's on PC. Never mind, it's on PC. Damn. It was cool though the way it works because like every, there was a lot of focus on placement. So like if you hit enemies from like flanks or behind, you get additional damage or you can knock them down stuff like that. But uh, the waifus were uh, ten out of ten. So that's all I needed. So uh, thanks for the question, Sam. Anyone uh, tuning in? If you want to let us know what you think about gimmicks or things that uh, you think add or do not add to the overall experience of the game but are to attract attention, let us know. If you fell for any or had any that uh, particularly sold you, also let us know. We'd appreciate it. So let's move forward, boys. We got news. A decent amount. News. We're going to end with Xbox's E3. And then uh, right now, it's, we're about 30 minutes into Bethesda's. And, and as we're recording, so I'll check to see if there's any new announcements on that front. I doubt it. Fallout 76 too. I don't know. Um, but first, we're going to go ahead and start with... Uh, we have a new Batman. Robert Pattinson. Right? That's his name? Yeah, yeah it's Robert Edward, Pattinson. Edward Cullen. Selena Kyle is Selena Gomez. Okay. Selena Gomez is Catwoman. Are you serious? Yeah. Selena Gomez? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. That so, was someone else. So the Disney... I'm honestly more Disney's upset that Selena over. Gomez is fucking Selena Kyle. And then rather than... Me too. I, I don't mind Robert Pattinson being... I think he's a pretty good I, actor. He's not big enough. He's very. He's a very lanky dude. Well, the Bruce thing is... is well, you can bulk up really easily. I mean, if you look at... um, um, What's, what's the fuck is his name? Christopher... Uh, yeah, we were talking about that the other night. The, 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 the uh, guy who played the Dark Knight tri um, trilogy, he played that Batman. Christopher, what the hell's his name? Christopher Nolan's the no, director. No, not the director. No, Christopher Nolan's the director. Yeah, I know. Thinking I, of, uh, of I think, what's his Christian name Bale. is Bale. Christian, Christian Bale. Bale, yeah. Not Christopher. Chris, Christian Bale is a much larger guy than Robert Pattinson. But yeah, if you've seen his roles that he's played, though, you can, you've seen him. He's oh, been, yeah, like The Machinist he, when he was a crazy person and he weighed like 80 pounds. Yeah, and you see him bulk up, like buff up. I mean, you can do it. I mean, it's. it's but he it's, has the frame for it from the beginning. I don't know if Pattinson does, but I, I'm holding out for Pattinson. I'm, I didn't, I'm, it wasn't one of those people who's like, oh, fuck it, no. He sparkled once in his life. <laughs> like, he's, he's doomed. Fucked, no, I. Yeah, like he can't because I've seen him pull off some really good intense roles. He's had a lot of upscale fighting to get respect after being in Twilight. Yeah, you dude, know? you got to start somewhere. So, he, he was a badass yeah. in uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. That was probably his like best role. <laughs> I didn't watch any of that. Uh, so, oh no, <laughs> it was it was just as bad. <laughs> actress, she can do some pretty neat stuff too, but I I just I cannot picture her. Having that special something that Selena Kyle has, that slinky feline grace that also feels just a little bit naughty and a little bit dangerous. I'm naughty. And mm -hmm. I, 
the you know the point is is i just don't see her being catwoman i, I feel I, that now bear in mind i don't think that and i like what's her face uh from the nolan trilogy Anne hathaway i don't think she was a good catwoman at all i i think she was fairly boring for the character I mean, has there ever right, been a good catwoman but, though and like yeah, cinematic Halle Berry. <laughs> was she good though I don't know. Uh, no, no. michelle pfeiffer was an amazing catwoman even though they didn't get the character right okay she was really good all right. Like she nailed um, that like really interesting exotic element of the character, the slinky element of the character, how she talked, how she moved. Like she really had that down. And when Catwoman's a villain, she's a fucking villain. You know, so like she really got that part down. Her origin, not so much. They kind of just made that shit up. The, the original <laughs> Batman movies with Burton were not comic accurate in the slightest. So they're they're they you go back now and they're a little campy, not nearly as campy as the Schumacher disasters, but they they did nail some of the Batman elements, at least the aesthetics very well. The designs of the Bat Cave, the vehicles, the costumes, the dark element, they kinda helped popularize that. And that was just starting back then. Before then, Batman was another D C hero. He had some dark storylines, but it's still a very brightly colored book overall and it changed. In the in the eighties. Okay, so boys. But I don't know. I just don't see Selena Kyle uh, being Selena Gomez. Like I just I can't put that together. I feel that she hot though. Also, I've lost super hot. many yeah. a nut to Selena Gomez. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what was I gonna say? So I'm gonna test you guys. I suck at this shit. So I'll, I'll give like shitty answers. But if you guys were to sit down and you were the casting team behind this. Who would you cast as Batman? Who would you cast as Catwoman? And let's add an additional... Who would you cast as... Penguin. Penguin? There you go. Uh, what's his name from um, the Philadelphia show? God, I forgot his name. Oh, the short dude? Yeah. I'm the garbage man. <laughs> I eat trash. <laughs> what the fuck is his name? <laughs> he was in Hercules, too. He was the devil in Hercules. Dude, Are you talking uh, about yes. Danny DeVito? Danny yes, DeVito is the penguin. Dude, he was the penguin in the, in the fucking 90s Batman movies, dude. He was oh, the okay. penguin in the Well, first bring film. him back, damn it. <laughs> he deserves a, a he second chance. He was a really good penguin. Either he that or that midget from Jackass. Continue. The thing he didn't nail about Penguin is Penguin is actually highly intelligent, and I'm not that this not that he wasn't, but and very dis- like he he feels like he's a distinguished person like he thinks he's a man of class so he always, that's why he's always wearing a tux yeah it's not to go along with the bird image it's because he thinks that he's a man of class so he's always trying to dress nice he's always trying to be effete and and uppity and classy and and part of this you know upper echelon the creme de la creme when in reality he's more of just a common criminal okay so brain. let's do that we're going to start with Tyler. We'll go to Sean. Try not to steal each other's answers. Uh, if you were to cast, again, Batman, a Penguin if you want, but I'll say Batman, Catwoman, and it's, pick one other that you'd like to see, that you, something that pops into your head okay. in the Batman universe. Um, so, I mean, there's there's a lot of different timelines to look at. The you, could, you could look at, Batman. like... <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the Batman. So you're looking... That kind of a Batman Year One situation where he's he's just starting just starting out. out. So he's yeah he's younger. Okay, he's so that, that's what I was making out. World travels where he learned oh. all the martial arts. He's finished picking up his base skill set of being a grandmaster at every kind of fan fist to fist fighting and all the that. Kind shit. of afraid of bats. <laughs> mm-hmm. So kind of a pussy. Yeah. Um. But he's just starting with the bat the uh, costume and whatnot. He's just done that. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that takes out the whole. Uh, I was thinking like an older Batman too. Um, I was gonna say, and it was on the side of a of a Ben Affleck, but I was gonna say like a Brad Pitt kind of Batman. I wonder how that would be out of curiosity. I gotcha. But uh, preach about Scientology. Yeah. Is that yeah. Brad? No, it's Tom Cruise. Never no, mind. Tom Cruise did that. But um, <laughs> if I were to go for like a younger Batman, fuck, I don't know. I. I always looked at like an older Batman, never too much of a younger Batman, but um a younger Batman. Um I was thinking fuck. What's yeah, I was name? thinking fuck. See, now too. I now I gotta research. If you need help researching a name, let me know. I'm here to help. No, um 
So what what would what would the age range be like? I mean, so would he be in his early twenties, mid twenties, sort of thing? That kind of young Batman. You told me, yeah, but you're to looking at probably around mid twenties. I honestly can't think of anything. <laughs> I really don't know. What are you looking at right now, Kyle? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just googling shit at this point. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at like like two guys just penis fencing right now. No, I was looking. At, I just Google actors, male actors, or I guess actors or male actors. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll go right to the cat one for right now. So I actually have two, and this could be interesting. And I think it's just because it's very sexy, and I could see it, her pulling it off. But um, I actually would like to see Penelope Cruz as a as a my cat. Too old. Too old. Wait, we're young. Way we're too young. old, yeah. Okay, uh, Camila Cabello. She could do it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Scarlett Johansson is that. Catwoman. She's too old, too, though. Um, I mean, but they make like her look young. Nah. But she's still, I think. Gal Gadot. Oh, that, that would no. be too bad. I think she could put she's off. Sexy I, I think she could put off a very good Catwoman. Well, um,. Very sleek, yeah, very elegant. Um, she has definitely has a feisty character. Dude, I'm pretty sure she's a freak, bro. Like in real life, guys, <laughs> I, I, I've been watching. Oh, oh, damn it, she's old too. I was gonna say Kate Blanchett, but then again, she's a. Bro, oh, no, no, no. Kate, Kate, what about, Kate Beckinsale, not Blanchett. Sorry. I'm helping Tyler here. So, what about Chris Hemsworth for Batman? No, no? I, I don't. No. Um, Liam, he's got that. His face. younger brother, Liam. If I would look at that with head for I'd say no, Liam. No, Liam can't act for shit. I mean. About I don't know. I would say I mean we just said fucking Robert Patterson is a new Batman, and we can agree that he can't act for shit. But look at his roles though too. No, he can act. That's the problem. He can act. He just doesn't have the look. He doesn't look like Batman. He doesn't look like Bruce. No, I'm saying I put ja- put James as Franco as Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I couldn't take if that seriously. Porn, yeah, I think Army Hammer could do it. I don't know. Or like is. Matt Bomer. <laughs> nope. But uh, I think Matt Bomer could do it. You don't know, Army Hammer was in the Lone Ranger movie. <laughs> like he's googling it, so give him a second. I suck ass. These man. are hard. Hey, you know what, Sean? If you know, go ahead. It sounds like you have yours picked out already. Uh, those Bell. are my only two picks for it. It's hard for me. I can, dude. I've seen so many Batman movies now, and I've, I'm air. so unhappy with Ben Affleck and Zack Snyder ruining the DC universe by completely destroying Superman and shitting all over Batman that uh, I almost gave up on it. But I I really don't know who I... I'm so in love with Batman that I don't think anybody's good enough until they prove me otherwise. Bro, who so is- it's hard. But I think Army Hammer could be a good young Bruce. I think Matt Bomer could do it. And as for... Um, Matt Bomer almost looks a little bit like like uh, Henry Cavill, but as for Catwoman, she would have to be sultry and slinky and secretive. Um, I think um, shit. What's her name? What about fucking? What was that dude in the, the Kingsman? I'd like a cool British Batman. I know it doesn't make any sense. I just, I'm just throwing names out at this point, I but I think about. he'd be cool. Yeah, I can see that. How about Zac Efron? As no. Batman? As Batman. Will he sing me a musical? Well, I saw a movie that he was in, and I really liked his role. He was a very serious role, too. I'm sure. I just haven't seen anything from him. You guys are much more into movies than I am. Um... Yeah, but when it comes to picking people to put Did in... Did you guys I... look at the pictures of Army Hammer and Matt Bomer? Oh, I got you. Army Hammer? You see what I'm talking about? Army Hammer, A-R-M-I. American actor. Army Hammer. Oh. Yeah, gotcha. that's a... Oh, that looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'd fuck him. Dude, he's 6'5". Oh, dude, he'd be intimidating as fuck, too. I'm down with that. I know he's already won, but... I think Gemma Arterton could be Catwoman. I'm just looking at people with really nice chins, bro. <laughs> so Henry Cavill. Some shitty ass movies. She was the chick that was in Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Hmm. Gotcha. All right, so I actually really do like Gal Gadot being a Catwoman. Yeah, it doesn't reason. have to be realistic of the comics. We're just casting. We're not yeah. good casters. We're just no, casting no. what we'd want. All right, me Khalifa as Catwoman. Ooh. She's got the boobs. Oh, Rooney Mark. 
that chick from uh the girl and the spider the the one from the Swedish movies the gr- the girl with the dragon tattoo. I can see that. I I've think only Rudy seen Mara pictures of her, it. but I think the pictures fit. So I'm down for that. All right, so now for Penguin. Rebecca Ferguson. Oh, as Penguin. <laughs> Somebody who's not. I think it would be. Hmm, you want an older guy, um, probably mid thirties to late. Where yeah, we I'd go? Say if since we're going younger, you'd probably say mid thirty. He because Penguin's got at least ten, fifteen years on Bruce. What if we go really old for Penguin and make him like, uh, what's that dude that directs his own well, films yeah, too? But it's all for the same movie, right? So you'd want to keep the age appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, you wouldn't want to go beyond 40, let's put it that oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do it. Uh, what's the action guy? He's in Transporter. I forget his name. Jason Statham. Jason Statham. Yeah, put it, just put it, make him walk around on his knees. That would be good. What a... Oh, uh, shit. Uh, Andy Circus, dude, just give him give him a fat suit. Yeah, there you go. Problem solved. Okay, I think I we spent the voice and everything. Um, you could get Paul Giamatti. He's a little too old for it, but <laughs> or uh, um, no, he's too young. I was thinking that that fat dude that's in all the Seth Rogen movies, and I can never remember his fucking name. He's really funny. He was in the Is that babysitter. Gal no. No, you're talking about um, uh, Danny McBride? Uh, no, 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 no. Jonah Hill. Uh, well, Danny McBride, actually, is not a bad call, though. But you know what it is? I was Danny thinking McBride Jonah Hill. I was thinking Jonah Hill, but I get him and the, the names mixed up all the time. I don't fucking know why. How about Robert De Niro? Dude, fuck that. Nick Frost. You just gotta you gotta young him up some because he's too old. But he would <laughs> nail that shit. The guy from Shaun of the Dead. The oh, okay. Guy. Jack Hell Black. Yeah, he could... <laughs> <laughs> Jack Black Jack... is Penguin, bro. I can see it. He's too old though. But... Who would actually? Who would make a good Riddler? Robert Pattinson. Oh, what's the dude that's Detective Pikachu? Ryan Gosling. Reynolds. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan, 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 I see. You see how bad I am yeah. with fucking names. Although that 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 would be Ryan Gosling uh, could do. Ryan Gosling's like Robert Pattinson though. He's got a good flexibility in his roles, like with Driver, uh, uh, baby, and the baby driver. What the fuck was a baby driver? Or yeah, like baby that. driver. Yeah, like I could see him because the Riddler is ice cold, right? He's a psychopath, and his jokes are his riddles. Like when he cracks a joke, it's only funny to him. And his riddles are sadistic, so you need someone who can play intense. And I think Pattinson could do that. I think Gosling could do that. You, you need somebody thin and lanky, and they need to play it exactly the opposite of the way Jim Carrey played it. <laughs> like, so get Jim Carrey. <laughs> horrible. No, he's too busy with the Sonic movie, dude. He's just way too busy. Uh, who's the, who the actor that played in Kick-Ass? The one that was Kick-Ass? Uh, yeah. The kid? Yeah, oh, I don't fucking know. He was also in the 2014 Godzilla film too, but I could see him as like a, a young Batman. Let me look. Kick ass. Not kick ass. Torrance. I want the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's two, just two separate words, man. Kid with a hyphen. Uh, Aaron Johnson. Yeah. Aaron yeah. Taylor Johnson. All right. I think we spent enough. On that note, Chloe Grace Moritz could do could you know, she's not quite good enough to be Catwoman, never mind. She's got the looks for it, but she doesn't have the uh the acting talent for it. She was almost there. She was getting really good. Then I saw her last couple of movies and they weren't swell. Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Nicolas Cage can do anything. Nicolas Cage and Keanu Reeves could be in any movie playing any role and I will watch that fucking movie. <laughs> Right. I, I would do. I was loyal to Keanu even when everyone else said that he was not good and couldn't act and was the same character all the time. And I argued and fought for him. And then John Wick came out, and all y'all motherfuckers are all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, Keanu's the greatest." And I've been saying that shit since Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Wait, 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 wait. So y'all motherfuckers that just recently jumped on the train can eat a dick. Well, are we talking about the Keanu Reeves from Fortnite? <laughs> It's a John Wick. We don't know what you're talking about, Kyle. <laughs> okay. Just That's not shit. his fault. 
Hey, they had to get someone as big as Thanos, so they got Keanu Reeves. Uh, He's bigger than Thanos. They, all they had to do was bring him in, and that fucking last movie would have never happened. Okay, so, fellas, we're going to move forward. Uh, Stadia, real quick. So, Stadia... No, no, uh, I have a question for you. Oh Who would you have play Joker? We're an hour and a half oh. in. Jared Leto, let's continue. <laughs> I will stab you in your colon. Um, Andy Serkis. I could see him playing a good Joker. Good call. Andy mm-hmm. Serkis can do anything. He can he can play a lot of wacky roles. And he's just at that age where he's old enough to be definitely be older than Bruce, but not so old that he's out of touch. Uh, I could definitely see that. And I could I'm see him Googling. like having like a cringy kind of like a nice Joker laugh C- too. Cringy. And, yeah. <laughs> Plus, he can be dark and fucking just creepy sinister, so you really need that from Joker. Um, I'm Googling people that have come to mind that might be decent. Uh, and I suck, so... Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> what a uh, note. That would probably be the one role he could do in his sleep. Bro, what if they... Let's make put... Joker black. I just help him. Dude, you shut the fuck. You just <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth, dude. I was about to say, what if they made Joker fucking black? <laughs> dude. That wouldn't work. <clears throat> I think, um, what's his name would be great for Joker. The guy who played Loki, Tom Middleston. He would oh, also be really good. Yeah, yeah I could see that, that would that would be good. I, I could see them actually doing that, and then him not know. doing like that great of a role. But I could see that like the cast. I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know, bro. I'm actually really excited for the Joker movie coming out with uh, with what's his face. So it looks interesting. Don't get me yeah. started. Okay, well, I won't. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Let us know what you guys think. Who would you cast for the next Batman movie? Uh, hopefully, do a better job than we did, but. Stadia. Stadia's here, or not yet, November, but they recently re- released some monetization, uh, how the game will be monetized. So Tyler, as someone who only knows about Stadia, I- I'd see like at a, at a surface level, will right? Be monetized? Yeah, the service, the service will be monetized. So in like, based on what you saw, it was like the half hour panel that they talked about it to like a, a normal person seeing that, I think people would quickly say, oh, it's a better switch they, they probably wouldn't look at the streaming aspect of it immediately um I actually i was gonna ask you for monetization like how they're monetizing it oh but actually a lot of people that have the vocal the vocal minority or vocal majority people that have talked about it do not because there, there is a very heavy stigma against streaming anything mm-hmm. because obviously internet yeah. is not the best even in the u.s there's a lot of areas that have just dog shit in mind yeah. Uh, so now Google has come out and said that for you to get like 1080p, it's only like 15 uh, down, which isn't crazy because they're not megabytes; they're megabits. I think they were using it on. So it's not 15 down. Uh, let me see. Stadia recommended. I saw. Yeah, that was your minimal. But like, I saw the counter argument where people were saying, "Well, okay, well nowadays, you know, internet is generally better than it used to be." So that minimal amount of data you should be able to at least run um well, your 1080 or even i mean 720 i think they it, even offer too here let's see they said that for 1080 at 60 you need 25 megabits per second let's see megabits 25 i thought it was no, no, lower no. megabits to megabytes they're different units of measurement mm-hmm. and then you need like 35 for 4k so or something how many megabits did they say it was 25 correct 25 megabits is three megabytes. You only need three megabytes down. Which most people, I say, could manage that in the U.S. That's for 1080p at 60. Yeah, but it's uh, the upload speed that's going to be killing people. Well, upload... They say the way the controller works to help with latency, that it manages a bit of the processing within itself, and the Chromecast does some of it as well. So it helps uh, reduce latency and just overall helps improve performance and image quality. They say for 4K, you need at least 30, uh, which is 
almost four megabytes a second. So it really comes down because one thing I was listening and one interesting thing that's get brought up is the service that's being used here. The encoding software is the same that is used in YouTube. One interesting thing is the YouTube it's recommended internet speed for 4k is almost double what's recommended for stadia now that doesn't mean they're lying it's possible that the pipeline that they will be using to send the information to us is completely different which is fine but one thing that's interesting is even if the game being streamed to you is in 4k if the bit rate at which you're getting the information is lower which it most certainly is at being only three megabits a second the bit rate's lower it's possible to see artifact or artifacting artifact artifacting whatever it means basically you see you see almost like uh pixels that stick out they don't blend in with the the rest of the video feed so it's possible to see and from some of the the tests i've seen done through digital foundry they say that there is on lower connections a bit of artifacting going on with the 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 feed coming to you so it's not perfect i think this technology is something that is really cool but i think it's coming way too early it seems like google's trying to get a head start on this jump into the streaming thing. The thing that I wanted to bring up to you is they recently announced how they'll be monetizing the the service. So there's two things that'll be coming. The first one being the Pro, Stadia Pro, will be launching in November. That will be $10 a month, and you have to buy your games. Now, there will be a library of games that you can access that will be free. Also, some discounted ones if you are a Pro member. But if you want to be able to stream in 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR, you will need to pay pay ten dollars a month to do so. Now, Wait, so you're able to you said you mentioned the library. I, I I must have missed that part. But um, like PS Plus, like PlayStation Plus, they have the free games they give out every mm-hmm. month. Yeah. It'd be something along those lines. Right, I don't right. Know. But but when you said library, I thought you meant like you know uh, a selection of games as opposed to they three games a month like two or three. You they know? they the only they haven't showed anything major. That's the biggest problem here. They haven't given us a reason to buy Stadia Pro mm-hmm. besides the 4K, and most people don't even have 4K TVs still, which is crazy when you think about it. But um, but um. Uh, they there's a games that they will be offering for free, but it's not like you'll have like Netflix where you have a whole library of stuff to access. Oh, to access it, right? Yeah. Most of the games you will still be purchasing at full price. Give you sixty dollars. And they're streamed games too, so it's like what you don't you don't own. You technically only own the license to play them. Right. So say Google does release this, and another thing that has people worried is Google has a history of not necessarily dropping projects by completely removing them, but they stop support like Google Fiber and uh, the Google Glasses projects. When things don't well, get Google any... Google Glass, they repurposed. Yeah, and the Google the Fiber is still... E- mouse. Yeah, Fiber still exists, but it's no longer being spread out. So in the areas that have Fiber, they have Google Fiber, but Google Fiber isn't actively being pushed to the country anymore, at least in its current state. Because Google's not an infrastructure company. They're a fucking internet company. So they had they were having to put their butt heads with Comcast and AT and T on where they were able to place their infrastructure because they weren't using their lines they were their own proprietary lines so there was just a lot going on with that and they just eventually stopped doing it now there's nothing wrong with that it's just say Stadia comes out and although the upkeep on this is nowhere near as crazy as doing like Google Fiber so all you're doing is running a server that's sending information between clients and and the server itself. So the upkeep admittedly probably isn't as large to keep the service running, but that doesn't mean that some person sitting at the top will be like, oh, hey, Stadia has is like negative 100% production or whatever the fuck, just ax it. We're not supporting it anymore. And then the person that people that did buy into it, now they have a problem where a library will probably still exist, but games being added to in the future, licensings for streamings, or licensing for streaming future games might be problematic in acquiring that if the project itself is no longer getting funding, which is one thing that, again, another another fright. Another thing, again, just internet as a whole, people don't like latency. One problem that a lot of people have is that this game, this service was tested, the base service, so the 1080p at 60, and by Digital Foundry, and their come up, it was about... They're saying if you're doing Stadia with recommended speeds, so the speeds that they recommend for 1080p at 60, right, the 15 megabits a second, um, they say that uh, with that connection speed, you're probably running a latency of 160 to 180 milliseconds. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it in the realms of a fighting game or first-person shooter, yeah. that's uh, close to like five to six frames of latency that you're running into. So when you compare that to a PC... 
a PC only does 60 to 80. It's half of what you'd be getting on Stadia on a TV. That's also on a TV, but since most of it's streaming, the the TV, the latency between the TV and the hardware isn't there because it's it's all just internet. Um, and if you were to compare it to a console, it's the it, it'd be compared to an Xbox One X on a normal TV. Um, that the connection, I, they didn't test PS4 for whatever reason. I didn't see the numbers for that, so I don't know how that number connects. But I'm assuming it'd be about the same for latency. So if you're jumping from PC to the service, you're literally the t- response time you're getting from the feed is almost doubled, which is pretty shitty. Now, I understand, I can see this. I can see this. It just feels like a weird niche because what's going on is there's a lot of people established in gaming already. So it, it serves as a cheap way for people to get into games, right? So you, all you got to do is get a Chromecast Ultra and get a controller. You don't even have to use their controller. You can use a random one. And you can you can access their service if you pay the fee uh, in November. So I can see it working for those types of people, but I just think that there's so many people already set in their ways. They already have hardware. Everyone's getting excited for the new release of the, the next console generation, or with all this talks about the biggest thing. But if you were if someone tells you that you can play. Well, any game you want, you got to buy it though. Still, but you can play it from your home. You don't have to worry about buying a console every few years because they they use their own hardware. So they have like the supercomputer that runs the game, and it will stream that instance of the game to you. So you technically, if you were, if you if this service blew up and you just what the hell was that? I don't know. Oh, your one of your your beeper fell out of your pocket for your car. Oh shit. Or whatever the fuck that is. Like a carb thingy. What the fuck is it? So, basically, if someone came up to you telling you that you never had to buy a console again, you just had to buy games and pay $10 a month, but you had to deal with latency, obviously, and you had to have a decent internet connection, would it be something that you, as someone that doesn't play games very often, would be into? I'd still buy a console. I don't know. It just—it seems interesting. Like I, I'd be curious. Like I, I don't know if I would buy it, but I would definitely love to try it out though. Beforehand, I'm, I'm very interested in the technology. It's a service for hotels. And and look at the price for it too. It's 130 bucks. Oh yeah, that's if you do get their founders edition. Yeah. yeah so what would it be <clears throat> without you know? I mean, the, the founders includes the. It gets, you get three months of game time or three months of Stadia time, whatever. You get the Chromecast Ultra, the controller, and then access to Destiny too. Which was over like however many. Um, like dollars over because it, it actually, if you look at the price, because I think like what's a brand new from Cash Pro or whatever they say it's a three hundred dollar value. Yes, but if that was the case, they wouldn't be selling it for one thirty. So it it's, makes it, it begs you the question asked. Then yeah, why? It sounds like they're they're low bone it, so they see the price. Oh and no, like okay, it's let me buy this. One hundred percent, it's uh FOMO, fear of missing out. That's mm-hmm. it's all psych psychological. Be like, oh hey, we'll get we're giving it out this founder. It's exclusive. It only be for this it's time. It's limited. It's in these countries. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, also that, bear in mind they could be using the tactic that Kia used: undersell your product in the beginning until people <laughs> realize that it's worth you know a certain amount, and then you can start charging your normal cost for it. Yeah, because Kias were undervalued for a long time, so you were able to get a lot more car for your money than you would get through any other car sales. Yeah, and uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not a Kia fan, but for a long time, I knew people that were going out and getting Kias for like next to nothing compared to anything else. But they're, they're... and they were able to get a ride for a, like a good ride for like cheap, and then a few years after that, all of a sudden, Kias were like stupid expensive. Also, think about their intention with the project. They're not, their intention is not to get you to buy physical stuff, obviously. So it'd be something you buy once, they have you in yeah. the, their system, get you're you in their service, yeah. and then once you think that, oh, this is pretty cool, I like this, it's not that bad, then if you're a lifetime subscriber, that's all they need. If they have a million people paying $10 a month, it's better than 2 million people buying consoles or whatever every four years. And if you think about cell it... cell phone uh, game mentality, you know? Like, here, we'll give you a free... <laughs> Batch of loot boxes, you Jesus. get a five star <laughs> hero, and now you're gonna want to buy more. Yeah, and it's also in it's if I think that at some point there'll be more of a push towards this, and there'll be less and less of a focus on physical. And then for a lot of people, that'll be very unfortunate. Um, but I just think that's kind of the way that this this industry is heading because it, it's just it's happening in other technology 
uh, areas as well. Everything's going digital. There's less and less of a focus on physical uh, ownership of things like that. And again, it's a whole different conversation. But in regards to Stadia, I think it's I think it's an interesting technology. And I think <clears throat> the more we see, because they already they're already talking about certain algorithms. So they have something called predictive rendering that will also help with latency. Where the game, I don't know how the fuck it does. It. It's probably machine learning or some kind of bullshit. Because that's Skynet. how that's how they <laughs> that's how they answer every question is machine that's learning. Skynet. But the game will predictively render the environments you'll be moving into ahead of time, so you'll have less of a latency because the game will, in a way, know what's happening next, kind of to a degree. I don't know how the fuck that works. That's just how they're saying You'd it. You'd have to have the software on your end uh, or something somewhere. That doesn't. I don't know. It, it doesn't make any like sense. You have to have some of it on your end. Why, how, why would you have to have anything on your end? Because if it's going to be rendering where you're going to be going, you can't have the computer beaming that to you. Like, because you, 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 when you have server time, it, the server's either reading the button presses on your end and responding using machinery on your end to respond to what you're doing, trusting what that machinery is reading, and then translating that on screen to the server. So it's having the server catch up to you, but on server time, your button presses and your responses aren't going to feel as responsive because the server is going to see you in a different place than the machine on your end shows you. Mm. And if you're, if you've got a controller in the Chromecast and it's running through a PC, I guess. No, it's, or it, it's literally television. just, it's anything. Okay, HDMI. So the, the, uh, the thumb drive is going to be doing most of the work, the thumb drive and the controller, if they're going to be putting hardware in the controller to handle some of the processing. So, well, if it's on it's, the none server of the processing end, is being handled on your end. Have to constantly be trying to catch up to whatever it is that your inputs are. So the server is going to have to be reading what you're doing, and then translating and then sending it back to you and putting it on the screen. That's the difference between playing Final Fantasy XIV normally and doing the Chocobo races. The controls are vastly different because. The way the MMO works normally is it trusts the PlayStation 4 to tell it where you are placed on the board when you're fighting a boss. So whether you get hit by something or not, which is something I just found out. So every time we say we're located somewhere, that's not necessarily true. Um, but when you're doing it, like, so <clears throat> the PlayStation decides everything and tells the server what is going on. But in the Chocobo racing, the server does everything. <clears throat> I think you're confusing so, rendering and movement. Rendering is just the environment around you being processed, the data. Like, yeah, like this is where this goes, this is where it goes. And when you run around a corner, knowing that there's a soda machine somewhere <laughs> in the game, like having the proper graphics and decals on it, like it's got to have that library at its disposal <laughs> and have an idea of where those things typically go. Yeah, and it does because it's running off of their computer. Uh, do you, but it's also it's got to respond to what you control, like where you turn to look. The only thing you're doing, Sean, think of this this way: you're connecting to their computer at their server, and the only thing that you're doing on your end is pressing buttons. Everything else is done on Google's end. There is no yeah, hardware on your that. side. So you press A, that information sent to the server. There's another thing that, that's interesting about information that I was talking with someone that works in server repair and stuff like that, is that the way that the controller works is it works differently where the cast is downloading, the controller is uploading. A lot of time when you deal with bandwidth, when things get clogged up, it's because you have too many things trying to download and there's only, there's only, there's a limit to how much that can happen, but there is, the limit is not shared between download and upload speed obviously. So if you have a controller just uploading information to a server and the Chromecast downloading the visual information that the live instance being rendered on their supercomputer is, to a degree, it will also reduce the latency of that image coming to you because that information is being processed faster because it's coming from the controller. But I think with the predictive rendering, it's more of making it where you are I don't fucking know. I'm not a major no, in this so kind of shit, but it, it it's interesting. I just think it lives and dies off of latency and it's going to take a very long time to get to a point where you can have it like picture perfect because internet's going to have internet infrastructure and internet is going to have to vastly improve in order for this service to ever kick off, which we'll see at some point in the future. Um, 
but I think the the technology is cool. I think the Google's presentation was actually really fucking bad. They did a bad job of selling the service because they they did like this whole thing that came out, and it, a lot of it feels like they're trying to bank off the fact that people don't know anything about this. So they come out and they're like, Google, they're like Google will send the information from the server to your screen faster than your eye sends images to your brain. Whoa! But like, it's stupid because there's some, there's been. Um, it's not physically you're, possible. You really like you really like in fucking with that chair, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not trying to, bro. <laughs> Would you want my chair? No, 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 it's all right. We made okay. it this far. Okay. Um, it is possible because you're brain only sends images your your eyes only send images to your brain at an average of 250 milliseconds so already it's faster the thing is is that 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 um that uh that oh my fucking god that sense we're all used to it being that rate all the time no matter what so obviously it feels fast 250 milliseconds is fast as fuck that's fine but when you're dealing with technology since it's all variable, and at the rate at which information is moved around, there is still, you see more of a difference because it's changing constantly. Whereas the brain, the eye to the brain is always the same. But out of all the senses they've tested, with the with sight being one of the slowest to actually get information to your brain and, and understood and analyzed being 250 seconds, and they do that with reaction time testing. Milliseconds. Yeah. That's 250 millionths of a second. Yeah. A, comp- a PC will send the information in 79 milliseconds. Yeah, but over Almost, a phone line or a cable line? No, in just in just a a a local instance going from your tower to your monitor kind of thing. Um but they're talking about being able to do it over the internet. Yeah, and it does. It does it in a, it does it in 180 milliseconds. We just said that earlier. That's the latency. That information Regardless is Regardless being... of the distance. Yeah, if you're at your recommended speed and the test that they've done, it's 180 milliseconds. Hmm. So it is faster, but it's just it's it's one of those things. It's it's just them shitting out their ass because they're just trying to tell you something that sounds amazing. But most technology we have to this day ran in a local instance already does that and does it much better than what they're trying to sell. So again, it's the, it's them banking off the fact that you don't know much about the service. So like, holy shit, it sends the information to my TV faster than my 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 eye sends information to my brain. That's insane. It's like we've had stuff been doing that for the last 10 years. It's not that big of a deal. Well, it's they, just they had a a modem that connected to 16-bit systems that allowed people to play games that were two-player couch in different states and there was minimal there was some slow down but it was and it was a 288 baud modem when they had 56k at the time and it was still working or 33 6 or whatever the yeah. fuck the one was between it they um have, they, they have found s- a way to get it to work with their packets like with how they work the packet size and shit so it's not like it's completely impossible to take something that sounds impossible because we haven't seen it work right and have it somehow work i just don't like the idea no and i i get that and again that's a different it's a different conversation, but okay. I, I I think that although I, again my my biggest opinion on this is that it's an interesting a technology that I think that has arrived too early. I don't think the technology we have is good enough to be a decent competitor with what is already rooted in so many households already, which is console and hardware gaming, local instances, live instances within the area that you're in, not being streamed over the internet. A lot of people. I also don't. I don't like the fact that they're taking. Like you're never going to have an audience that doesn't care entirely about physical media. They need to keep that as an option, even if it's not the priority. Even if the the leg switches and it becomes a, a majority digital market and a minority physical media market, like the way it's been in the reverse, you still need to. It's just too easy to take things away from people when they don't have the the physical media. I can go back and play any one of my PlayStation 1, 2, and the majority of my PlayStation 3 games, uh, or N64, or whatever, anytime I want to. But the moment a server goes down, or they decide not to house a game anymore, you've got another um, Silent Hill promo issue, where like you make a game and then it's taken from everybody, because they don't want to host it anymore. Yeah, again, we've, we've already had that conversation as well. But I feel like that they haven't really 
showed you enough. I mean, they this is like their first, like the longest conference that they had talking about it. And before that, it was a few months ago when they just started introducing it. So if it's released in sometime, what, November? November is when it drops. So they have a little bit more time to kind of explain to uh, the is, audience. Of, this is all speculation. Well, uh, absolutely. Well, few testing. And that's it because they haven't showed you enough. Like, yeah. So you're left to speculate. And But it's the, I think that's what they're doing, though, too. They're making you think and ask these questions and then... They're making you interested into it. Uh, I, so, I'm cer- certainly not but, buying this because my PC does it worlds better. And, <laughs> but I just, I think that, it, it, I just love the idea of it for someone that, for just something that sits on the side. Something as right. an option for someone. So people can still experience games and still be able to do that. Make the buy-in a lot less. And they don't have to worry about other things like that. And still be able to engage in these really awesome experiences as long as it just is a sideline competitor Mm. and the way google's been talking about it is that they seek to replace it in Mm, that degree and that's not something that's something me and sean don't necessarily think is is a good idea because of the whole physical thing and i hope it never becomes that and i don't think the way the internet's talking about it it looks like this shit's gonna fall flat on its face the moment it launches until they do something about it because everyone but for the most part is saying that like they don't they, they, they think it's bad they don't have either decent internet the latency rather just play it on their own like if you look at youtube which is the same video encoder they'll be using for this service it has problems all the fucking time who's to say they don't have an issue with their server and for a few hours you just can't play any games for a service you're paying ten dollars a month for and then if that's the only thing you have of access to you're fucked you just can't do anything mm-hmm. um so it's all interesting. Uh, I was just wanted to bring the monetization method model up um, because a lot of people were thinking this would be like the Netflix of games. You pay a few dollars a month and then you have access to a whole expansive library of shit that you get to play and, and enjoy. But no, you still have to buy those games. So, And at full price. At full price. I was, they'll have a lot of sales on shit, but for the most part, it is indeed full price. Also, uh, I also want to know something I don't think they talked about was... I mean, when you play video games, you play them with friends too. They, they, I don't believe they, they said anything about playing. The online is included. But how do they go? Th- or you know, they didn't like introduce like, oh, here's a headset, or is it is it some sort of capable headset? Oh, or that's can you a good use idea. Your, actually, you know, how do you? How are you guys? Is there a party? Is there a um, a HUD or something like that? Or something? Oh, yeah, sort they of... haven't showed any of their UI or the so actual service. That's, off. that's what I want to see though too, because I mean, I'm not, I'm definitely not buying it now because I don't even know what else there is. You know, I don't want to to go ahead and waste my money and find out that that's not even a thing yet or it's not available until who knows another six months a year down the road i don't even think about communicating also are they going to give you a a steam option to download your games in case the internet goes down so you can still play your system no no fucking way the moment a a bad storm goes through knocks out a line something like that you're shit out of luck you can't play your system as far as we understand you are shit out of luck so <clears throat> Again, eh, it feels technology's here. It's just too early. So I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. See if how if it falls flat on its face, stuff like that. Um, but <clears throat> I don't have too much faith in it, and neither does a lot of the vocal uh, portion of the internet. So, <clears throat> final thing before we uh, c- wrap it up for tonight. It's been two hours. Holy shit! Yeah, Xbox E3 happened. We're actually about an hour into Bethesda's E3. So we shall see if anything's crazy going on. I mean, they talked about Young Blood, new co-op Wolfenstein. It's coming to the Switch, which is cool. Yeah, all that. Uh, that's gonna be fun. Let me see. Let me get on Twitter. Co-op shooters are always fun. <clears throat> but um, so first we have Xbox. We'll go over Xbox real quick, and then I'll move forward. So, um, Xbox E3 happened. We had a lot of really fucking cool announcements come through. Ooh. Why am I on cognito mode? What the fuck? Porn, bro. Yeah, yeah porn. Delete the browser. Okay. So we have a few things. A new Elite controller is coming out. They showed off Project Scarlet, the next Xbox console that will be coming, and all these boasts of um, like being able to... I like the way they're focusing. It looks like they've learned their lesson to a degree because when the Xbox One came out, there was this multimedia focus. Watch your TV, all this shit, and that fucking... F- absolutely ruined them for the entire generation but now it seems like they've learned their lesson they're being like now we're focuses on the games and the gamers and I, I hate that lingo so much but um 
So it looks like they're moving more towards that, making it just like a really refined uh, gaming experience and shit like that. That's nice. But it, it's on its way. It will support 8K gaming of frame rates up to 120 FPS in games and ray tracing. will be launching the end of 2020. So that's exciting. That does better what my computer can do. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I love how ray tracing, which is something that's been around for a while but has never been put into practical use, is the new the new gimmick to sell things on yeah uh the thing yeah the problem with ray tracing like you said is that the devs aren't using it because not much stuff utilizes it properly but the moment that it is starting to be put into play by developers then it it actually is it does do a good job of reducing load on hardware the way that it renders and the way that it manages the light and stuff like that because ray tracing isn't just seeing reflections and shit it's the whole engine and how it deals with light and how it moves to the the environment so um again like you said right now no 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 games actually utilize it besides like battlefield and some shit like that but as games start to utilize it i think it'll be just something that will replace uh traditional uh, rendering methods for that for that uh that part so wasn't it the uh wasn't ray tracing the the uh, there's a uh, coloring or a light reflecting element that they invented for the movie Ice Age that became like the new thing to use in digital animation where if you were wearing a red shirt and you were next to a white surface in the in the animation, if the, the light reflecting off of your shirt hitting that white surface would show a red tone on the white surface, just like if you walked by a white wall with a red shirt. And they and they were bringing that into is that I don't remember if, is that involved in ray tracing or was that something different? It's a byproduct of ray tracing. It allows for yeah, that that technology, yeah. But ray tracing is it it's kind of it means what it, it it is, but it basically simulates light instead of light being an object in the world. It shows it traces the the path that the pixel takes or its ray as it goes to the to the world and all the light that is simu- it's all simulated through the the path that the pixel takes instead of it being an actual object that exists within the world and that's what allows for more of a natural light because most of the light that you're seeing now is all simulated in the environment instead of it just being objects yeah. so it helps with that a lot uh but it it's it's its own crazy algorithm that is something i do not know too much of so that is what it is. We're getting a new Elite controller. The first one was a piece of shit, so that's that. Uh, Gears 5 is coming out. Gears 4 was Meh. not that good, so Meh. we'll see how it is. Elden Ring, so the George R. R. Martin X, um, uh, what's his name? I forget his name. Miyazaki. The Japanese dude that created Dark Souls, or helped create Dark Souls. But FromSoft is making a new game in collaboration with George R. R. Martin. It's called Elden Ring. They didn't really show much. A lot of this conference was trailer, 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 trailer. We didn't see much of gameplay at all. Um, So they were just showing off a bunch of shit. Uh, Elden Ring looks cool, but I have no fucking clue what it's about. It looks like Dark Souls with R.R. Martin helping with the the writing. So I I have no idea what to expect. It's a fantasy game. Um, But it was pretty fucking badass, the trailer. Like, the music was really good. I was getting goosebumps. It looks cool. Dark Souls-esque, for sure. Very Dark Souls. Um, boys, everyone prepare to clap. Flight Simulator 2020. It's coming. I dream. I actually watched this live. It, it looks gorgeous. It almost looks real. Like how it's, it's fucking insane. Like all that is all generated on a computer because it all looks like photorealistic as hell. It's insane. Um, one of the bigger things, Cyberpunk 2077 showed off a new cinematic trailer. And uh, boys, Keanu Reeves from Fortnite will be in cyberpunk 2077 he was actually there at the event he came out on stage and is like yeah That's pretty awesome dude i'm telling you fortnite lost that guy's career yeah exactly dude like, nothing else that guy Man, did one before. day you get in fortnite and then you're in cyberpunk you're all over the world you're in john wick <laughs> Man. <laughs> all right so uh cyberpunk looked badass it was it did cool. look really good yeah seeing uh i'm I, it's one of my favorite uh sci-fi genres so i can't wait to delve into that game but Again, not much gun or gameplay. We saw a little bit here and there. There was some like uh, that showed a gun about to shoot. He was like holding a dude at standpoint or stuff like that. But most of it was still like little bits of story here and there. And then the uh, Keanu uh, that reveal. So that was something I was not expecting in any way, shape, or form. So that definitely was one of the highlights of E3. Uh, that that reveal. So 
It looks badass as ever. Music's fucking phenomenal. It all looks really fucking cool. Uh, is there anything you notice, Sean, that you'd like to add? Um, no, they, the, uh, CD Projekt Red just continues to impress me. Oh, yeah. They, they make a few mistakes here and there. But they seem to have their heads in the right places and their hearts in the right places. And they, they are dedicated to making a game for cyberpunk fans. And too frequently, cyberpunk games get waylaid with, like, agendas and bullshit. And the, we don't get very many of them. And when we do... They're just not what you want. And cyberpunk is one of my all-time favorite genres. It is by far my mo- my favorite science fiction genre, but it's one of my all-time favorite storytelling genres. I love the role-playing game. I've played the tabletop game for years. I have numerous books. I've read all their short stories, all their novels. Like I really love that universe, and I feel like it perfectly captures Gibson's vision of cyberpunk and puts its own little twist on it. So to see them adapt that faithfully they're bringing rule systems over they're bringing all of the terminology over they're keeping it gritty they are not holding any punches they don't care what anyone has to say and cyberpunk really should be a bulletproof kind of concept because just the nature of of abandoning the flesh and becoming something more than human and changing yourself however you like really fits today's mindset so there there shouldn't be a lot of problems there but i i i'm very excited i'm very excited to play it i'm very excited to have it i've been waiting a very long time for a cyberpunk game i can't even tell you the last time i played a pure hard cyberpunk game and i love the fact that um you, you there it's fully voiced you you're selecting your voice you're selecting what your character looks like, but your character does have personality. They're not some kind of piece of shit blank slate that you have to make up as you go along. And you're kind of controlling what direction they take and the kind of person they become. So I'm, I'm really, I, I'm, I, I can't wait to play it. I'm curious what kind of elements they're going to put in. I know it's a single player game, uh, but I wonder if there's going to be any influence in your part of town by maybe if you have friends that are playing also because you could easily have like ads and things appear like just little stuff like that yeah but it, i'm excited i want to see it i want to play it i just I, want more I gameplay trust them. yeah but and another cool thing if you guys haven't heard recently that cg product cd project red uh had came out and said that their approach moving forward with the whole crunch time and shit like that was going to be much more humane uh, and that was their words. Um, so that's very cool to hear from them too, because I've heard a lot of horror stories from CD Projekt Red in, in their past times about just absolutely horrid schedules and fucking working people to the bone and stuff like that. So it's nice to see that they're kind of changing that approach as well moving forward. But if you guys are excited, the game launches April 16th, 2020. So it will be in our hands uh, a little bit less than a year. So that's fucking exciting as shit. That's about what I expected. I think when we did guess, we'd say like, we said like mid 2020, uh, when we were uh, guessing when it was first released. So that's very cool. Um, they also showed off more of the outer worlds, which is a, uh, obsidian RPG in the, in the, in the style of fallout. So that's really cool. And now they are the original creators behind fallout. So it's really nice to, um, see them taking their their knock on especially after bethesda absolutely shitting all over the (laughs) recent uh um projects that they've had in that universe so it looks good it's launching october 25th on xbox one ps4 and pc although it's coming to epic launcher on pc uh so do it with do with that what you will ninja theory is making a 4v4 action game it's called bleeding edge it's kind of like looks kind of like it's like a multiplayer like overwatch or like Team Fortress, I guess I'd feel a little bit more Team Fortress than Overwatch, but um, it looks nice. June 27th, these are kind of the small things. They're having a game called Minecraft Dungeon this coming next spring, and it looks like Diablo, but it's Minecraft-themed. So that's interesting. Was not expecting that fucking whatsoever. Uh, Blair Witch is actually getting a game. Now, I was not expecting that whatsoever when it first, I was even when I was showing it to Tyler, when it first... I kind of thought that was a dead property. You had one successful movie. I have no two idea. Two failed movies. Uh, a sequel to the second movie that never came out. It looks. I'm fun. Sur- I, bet, I think it is a good premise for uh, a horror game, but I, it would. I think it would be an indie horror game. I wasn't expecting them to talk about a 
a larger budget title to yeah. be Blair Witch. That's it looks, kind of interesting. It looks fucking terrifying, but it, it looks like it. There was it's weird because uh, it's very again a very misleading kind of like Halo's trailer where it almost looks like Outlast at first, then you get kind of like an Alan Wake vibe, and then you get that one scene from the end of the initial movie with the dude in the corner and him turning around. And I think, I don't know if it's the same dude, I don't know, but it's that scene, I'm like, oh shit, that's from Blair Witch. Wait a fucking second. Then it zooms Blair out, Witch. and you got the the, cur- the curse sigil or whatever, and it says Blair Witch. So I was not expecting that. I don't think a lot of people were either. Um, we got a first real look at the uh, Battletoads revival, which looked really fucking nice. The animation looked clean as hell. Uh, um, that I'm excited for. Yeah. That would make me consider buying a used Xbox just to play Battletoads, because that game was ridiculously hard and super excellent and it and beat em up games are few and far between they're classic uh and that one definitely holds up dragon's crown does too but battle toads and double dragon really made that that genre kind of what it is yeah definitely and um fantasy star online 2 is coming next year a that's uh, very cool one of uh, japan's biggest mmos will be making its way over here uh it launched back in 2012 in Japan on PC. It'll be coming to Xbox One next year as a free-to-play experience, which is something, again, something I didn't expect. There's a lot of weeb going on in this Xbox conference. They showed off a new Tales they of game. They showed off a new Tales game, Tales of Arise, which looked fucking really sexy. Typical JRPG anime action. And then finally, we got Halo. Uh, started almost as like a Dead Space-esque looking trailer. But moment that man came out, he's like UNSC. He saw Master Chief floating around in space. It looked like uh, the music. It was it was almost a very nostalgic feel. It was like Halo Three, Halo Two, Halo Three esque kind of. Yeah, there's a very nostalgic feel to the trailer. Like seeing Chief beginning, back, beginning of Halo Three, like the little piano intro in the beginning there, and you have Cortana talking. And it's like it sounds like the beginning, the very begins of Halo Three when he's like crashing into the planet side. Yeah, one interesting thing is that when he put the chip that Cortana usually sits on in his head, because he had it on him from the end of Five, um, there there was no AI loaded into it. But later in the trailer, he goes somewhere and he speaks, or Cortana speaking to him. So I don't know if there's like a backup of Cortana somewhere, and that's how they're rectifying this whole situation because no one liked the the way Phi was going. It almost felt like fan fiction. Maybe that's how they're rectifying everything, where they're like finding a backup of Cortana and she's no longer like this sadistic evil AI kind of thing. Um, I'll, I'll be all down for that. that that's a, the least thing I was least yeah. interested in moving forward with Halo was the story, if they were taking the same routes that it had, it had been going in. But my favorite thing is that this game's coming to PC, so I'm fucking hyped to see that uh, as as we move closer, especially in brand new engine. It looks gorgeous. Another thing, everything looks so pretty. Tales of Arise looked fucking gorgeous. The world design looked fantastic. And the anime characters, obviously their models were typically less detail rich than a an actual character but the world looked fucking phenomenal and then you have cyberpunk and everything in cyberpunk look almost live action especially in like the scene where he's like washing the blood off of his hands yeah do you saw the glistening and stuff it, 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 looks- it looks like dead ass like almost straight shot uh with real people kind of thing. And then Halo looked really good. The new engine looks really good. I'm excited to see more of how that looks. But yeah, from from like the whole nostalgic aspect, even like the when he first turns on and you hear the old classic shield charging up sound, mm-hmm. it feels very much like we're almost getting like a return to form kind of thing, which I really fucking hope 343 takes the game in that direction. So it still is 343. Um but that was more of the larger things coming out of the Xbox conference. It was overall a pretty decent conference. Um, I think there was a lot of indie fluff, which is, I mean, again, fluff is is subjective because uh, there was a lot of interesting looking projects. There's one called 12 Minutes, which basically featured a man and a woman, and the man was was stuck in a 12-minute time loop. And you're basically trying to save your wife, but there's like a whole bunch of shit that goes down. Someone trying to kill her, and it showed a few different, almost looked like different endings of you fucking up in different ways. Where like you getting arrested by the police, one of her getting stabbed in the bathroom, and all this other stuff. You trying to save her and get out of this endless loop kind of thing. It looked very interesting. Definitely has to be driven by its narrative. Hopefully, it's well done. Um, a few other uh, indie titles popped up here and there. Some looked nice, some looked creative, but it's indie. I mean. Give, do it with what you will. They picked up a whole bunch of studios. So obviously, a lot of what they'd be showing would be indie titles. So overall, I give the conference like a. Having watched it from start to finish, 
probably give it like a six, a five or a six, maybe, maybe a seven because the things that were big hit kind of hard and they were really cool. It was not, there's a lot that I was not expecting out of Xbox. This they, they're adding Legos to Forza. I forgot about that. Just so you can drive Lego cars in mm-hmm. Forza into Lego environments. They actually brought a McLaren onto, onto the stage made entirely out of Legos. I saw that. Isn't that fucking That's... crazy? So just some, just, it just felt like, you were always excited to see what's next because you weren't ever expecting what was fucking coming out of Xbox. So I'd, I'd probably give it closer to a 7 because the big reveals were fucking awesome. Keanu and all that stuff, and I think they did a pretty good job. So. I wonder how much they paid them to get it on It felt there. a lot more like an old school E3. I'll go on that for sure. Yeah, there was... Like, it, they had the spectacle, and they had, like, the surprises and the oohs and ahs and all that stuff that's been missing for so long. Bro, that whole thing where this where they shown off gears and the stage basically like exploded down. They had a whole underneath area called the hive, and they had these like uh, WWE professionals playing Gears Five or some shit. But it like the stage fucking exploded, and there's like this whole area underneath, and it was all designed and all looked really cool. It was like again, That's a gimmick. Yeah, it is, but it's to uh, reinforce that whole focus on spectacle. It was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Xbox really needed this conference. So hopefully there'll be more people. Again, I'm I'm just looking for competition, man. Get us get some cool games. Probably won't buy an Xbox because most of their shit they drop on PC. Speaking of that, PC is getting Xbox Game Pass. So that's really nice. All the games on the Game Pass will be moving over to PC. So if you guys, you could pick it up for $5 on PC, which is really fucking cheap. You have access to this huge library of games. And they're all available on PC now. Because before, you had like five games. It was really fucking garbage. But now it looks like it's uh they're they're finally focusing more. There's more and more and more and more of a focus towards their PC audience, which is huge. Their PC audience is fucking e- enormous. So they'll definitely be helping them out more since the console generation has been lackluster. Uh, but overall, it was an awesome E3. It was cool. I was watching it with uh Hector and the other Tyler, and we were all kind of ooing and aahing as shit was going on. It was, it was pretty fun. Um, so I'm excited to check out more of it. I haven't seen anything else coming out of. Let's see if Bethesda's dropped anything real quick before we wrap up our day. Um, anything about E3 that has, has you guys hoping? I'd love to see Metroid Prime 4, uh, but I think Nintendo... Oh, nice. I don't know if Nintendo will... I don't know if... I don't think they've done their thing yet, but I'm going to look to see if... Let's see what Bethesda's talked about. Tweets. Here we go. You still need a HD re-release of the original Prime series. Yeah, that would be, be nice if they included the spinoffs like Fusion and stuff too, because Fusion was a direct offshoot of what happened in Prime. Yeah. So they showed off the Doom Collector's Edition, which actually comes with a Doom Guy helmet. That's fucking awesome. Uh, let's see. You don't have to post the the Doom thing. So they showed off Doom Eternal. I'm gonna have to watch that back because I'm super excited for that game. Some game called Death Loop coming from Arcane Studios. I don't know what that is. Orion is a collection of software technologies that will optimize game engines for superior performance in a streaming environment. I have no idea what that is. Uh, is that Idris Elba? Whatever his name is? In Deathloop? It looks like it. They showed off... There's more stuff for Rage 2. Showed off the new Wolfenstein game. But again, nothing crazy coming out of Bethesda. Showed off some Elder Scrolls Online stuff. Um, but uh, again, we didn't get to watch it, unfortunately, because we were, we were recording for you lovely people. So, how we doing, guys? We excited? I'm fucking hyped. That's cool stuff. That's Square cool. Enix is on Monday tomorrow More night. More than last year, for sure. Tomorrow night at 9, they have already said that Shadowbringers will have a presence at E3. I cannot fucking wait to see what they show off. I'd love to see a new cinematic, because I've already watched the last one like 75 times. So, seeing a new one would be cool as fuck. But, uh... That's about the only thing I'm excited for Squares for. They might show off more of Astral Chain. I don't know if Nintendo or them have the rights to doing that, but Astral Chain's a new... It's a new uh, uh, new action RPG coming from Platinum, the people behind Nier Automata and Bayonetta and stuff like that. So, But uh, I'm excited. Very excited. Uh, so it's keeping my mind off Except of for the, wallet. the rest of life. Wallet's, yeah, not, wallet's not excited, but uh, everything else is excited. So... I appreciate you boys for joining me tonight. Everyone tuning in. We appreciate you for hanging out with us. Feel free to please uh, connect with us. All the uh, links for everything will be below. If you want to hit us up on Discord, all of that, you'll be able to just tap it in the, or on the app wherever you're listening to us, and you'll be able to uh, connect with us. We'd, it'd mean a lot. Just hearing from you guys is the biggest thing for us right now. Oh, yeah. 
<clears throat> so, you guys want to uh, close this out here? Sure. Um, I'll think about you guys tonight. Ooh, I will too. In my prayers. Well, I'm fingering my asshole. Oh, fuck. Hey, two sides of the same coin. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Sean? Make it really... Wait, 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 wait. Do it again, but really slow while I look for this fact. Like, sexually, too. Please, I need it. Hugs and kisses on all your pink parts. Ooh. The... The... At the end. There you go. Oh. Nice, bro. I remember that from the school days. Mm, good old days. <laughs> I grabbed the cheeks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, I grabbed the cheeks. Over that and making the Mac computers in the library say penis with text-to-speech. <laughs> Those were the days back then. Okay. Ah, memories. So, before we go, I shall leave you all with a thought. Lawn darts are illegal in Canada.